Sprinkles if you got them. Jack's Donuts, find a location near you, now. This is the Frells family's land. When the sun comes out, the kids run and play right there. This used to be a shed. Now, it's where they get breakfast. This is more than just land. It's home. The Frells family runs with us on a John Deere 1 Series tractor. This land isn't the only thing that should live on for generations. Nothing runs like a deer. Search John Deere 1 Series for more. Visit Reynolds Farm Equipment, your hometown John Deere dealer today at ReynoldsFarmEquipment.com. You're good at making big announcements. We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, online, over the phone, or in person, and stop knocking on wood. From warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. Craving comfort fresh food made from scratch daily? Check out Aspen Creek Grill. Located across from Hamilton Town Center and beside the Holiday Inn, we offer family farm-raised premium Black Agnes steaks hand-cut daily, creamy pastas, salmon chicken, and fall-off-the-bone ribs. Start with our famous powwow shrimp appetizer and don't miss our refreshing drinks. Family-friendly or a great night out with friends? Aspen Creek Grill. Aspen Creek Grill, Noblesville. Call 317-559-3300. Burtner Electric Incorporated has been proudly serving our residential and commercial customers with quality electrical repair for over 33 years. We are fully licensed and insured in electrical wiring and electrician service packages. You'll receive a competitive assessment, whether you're a homeowner or a business owner, first-time or long-time customer. We offer free estimates for any new project. Call our licensed and experienced electricians today. wanted was to feel loved. He said he loved me. My friends told me it wasn't a big deal. They thought he was so cool, but they didn't know what he wanted me to do. All I ever wanted was to feel loved. You have no idea the kind of pressure I felt to take things to the next level. Things were moving so fast. I was basically the only person in the freshman class who hadn't done it yet. So, we did. I loved him. I thought she loved me. My health class had CPR at school. I stayed after class to talk with the instructor about it. They showed me that it didn't have to be that way. 
They showed me that I get to make my own choices. There is another way. That's the best thing CPR gives you. Another way. A better way. A healthy way. Sometimes you don't see it because you're in your own world. But they don't make you feel bad. They talk to you like a real person. And they save kids from really unhealthy decisions. They tell the truth and they know what they're talking about. So yeah, my life was different. I started to choose the better way. I honestly don't know where I'd be or what I'd be doing had it not been for CPR. You want a career that creates experiences that are impossible to forget. By studying sports and events at IUPUI, you'll get hands-on experience in and out of the classroom. And with India as your classroom, there are high-profile events, sports franchises, hotels, museums, and large organizations across the city to engage, educate, and enlighten your student journey before you graduate. There isn't a better city than Indianapolis to get the experience you need to prepare you to handle any event, big or small. It all starts here. High school sports fans, welcome back to game time, to pure spirit, to pure sport. Welcome back to high school sports. Fans, I'm IHSA Commissioner Paul Knighty, and I just want to say, welcome back. This is game time. This is Indiana high school sports. This is your IHSAA. You want a career that will transform your life while you change the lives of others by helping them live well. With a health or exercise sciences degree from IUPUI School of Health and Human Sciences, you will gain an in-depth understanding of the healthcare industry while preparing you for a variety of graduate and professional programs in health. And with India as your classroom, you will have clinical options within leading hospitals right in our backyard, as well as a degree from Indiana University, reputable leaders in the healthcare industry. It all starts here. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. After the Marine Corps, I was diagnosed with PTSD and became homeless for 15 years. Like a hermit living on the street, I just existed. I came to Wheeler Mission. Wheeler operates on a culture of kindness. Going through their programs reminded me that my meaning in life is to serve God. God set me free from anxiety and depression. Before Wheeler, I just existed, but today I live. Sprinkles if you got them. Jack's Donuts, find a location near you now. Hey conductor, how about something new? You played this last year. Come on, get your head out of your sacks. Shh, we're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick and tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? The conductor only plays his favorite. Woo! I get her! That was so low! You say you like it? Yeah, Come yeah. on! This is Road again on first down, right up the middle. He hurdles a tackler at the 10, Road cruising inside the 5. Fisher under center, gives it to the fullback, Seward. Touchdown, Tigers, from a yard out for Seward, his second rushing score of the season. And his Fisher goes under center, and he gives it to Road right up the middle. Road a big gain. Near the midfield stripe, he is tripped up. Hello, Porter Road. He is coming. 
Fisher on play action. Good protection up front. He flings it down the field. Has a man open. It's caught. That is Caleb Elserman racing to the end zone. It's a bomb. Touchdown, Tigers. From Inlow Field, it's the final week of the regular season, Rivalry Week. The Castle Knights and the Memorial Tigers here on Indiana SRN. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Memorial High School. Mel K, Mechanical, Electrical, Plumbing. The Book Broker, Escape Your Reality. The Memorial Booster Club, Oakland City University. Tigers football is brought to you by Ivy Tech Community College. Pet Food Center. Royal Express Car Wash, Stone and Stratman, Attorneys at Law, and by Rockabar Pizza. Final week of the regular season, a pair of five and three teams going at it tonight. The Castle Knights taking on the Memorial Tigers alongside Mike Scavara. I'm Jeff Revan, glad to have you along with us. And uh, Mike, two very even teams going head to head to wrap up the regular season before first round of sectionals next week. And, well, these two schools, they're rivals. They don't like each other, and the last handful of meetings have been very close. You're right. Uh, in fact, uh, each team has five-game win streaks before uh, uh, the uh, Castle Knights were victorious 21-7. Uh, a player, the quarterback for uh, uh, Castle, uh, Braden Bishop, uh, actually caught a touchdown pass, and Peyton Grazzini, who's not playing tonight, had a couple of touchdowns runs. Cale Belsperman had a touchdown run. So uh, uh, a lot of games rivalry week this is just one of five let's talk about castle a bit in their uh, season summary as they're five and three under doug hurt who's in his 17th season three losses two of which are by three points or fewer they lost week two at modern day 17 14 then week seven home against jasper in overtime 43 42 so they could very well be seven and one and it's impressive what they've done this year without one of their main horses peyton grazzini you're right, and again, Grazzini has only played the first three games, but uh, Max McCool has filled in uh, admirably for him. He's uh, one of the top five rushers uh, uh, in the conference, and you stop and look at both these teams, very similar offensively and defensively. Uh, Castle more of a pass, a running team than the Memorial, a passing team. For the Tigers, they're also 5-3, and three, coming off a win last week at Vincennes, 28-10. Final score may be a bit misleading as it was a tight game. Vincennes had first and goal from the one, start of the fourth quarter, trailing 14-10. And they couldn't score it there. They fumbled three times, missed a field goal, and the Tigers run away with a 28-10 win. You're right, and you talked about uh, maybe Castle being 7-1. Uh, and one. The Tigers lost their first two games. They made some adjustments uh, on their player personnel. And, uh, you know, again, Jasper, who, congratulations to Corey Brunson and his crew. They are the uh, uh, conference championship. Uh, they're over playing over in the Wrights Bowl right now uh, against uh, the Westside rival, uh, Modern Day uh, Memorial. Uh, when you look at the, their uh, offensive performance, again, as we talked about, they're more passing. In fact, uh, Matthew Fisher, he's number two in the conference in throwing yardage. One fun note, we talked about how even these teams are when you compare the uh, coaching careers of the two head coaches. John Hurley, Fort Memorial, in his 15th year, he is 124-65. and 65. Castle's head coach, Doug Hurt, is 124 and 68 over 17 years. Yeah, after tonight, somebody's going to have the bragging rights. Of course, Coach John Hurley will tell you that it took Doug Hurt two more years uh, to uh, get the 124 wins. So you're right. Uh, and uh, as you look at that, both teams, as you said, five and three. Both teams play basically a 4 3 defense, and both teams uh, uh, coming in um, uh, offensively, uh, more, mainly the spread. Let's talk about some key players tonight. First for Castle offensively, we talked about how they've had to work around not having their senior running back in Peyton Garzini. Well, a guy that stepped up as their tight end, six foot three senior, Weston Eigner. 
Yeah, Eigner has a nice job. He's a three-year starter, and, uh, you know, for his career, he's almost got 1,300 yards and 16 touchdowns. He's also a special teams kind of guy, and uh, he's uh, a leader on and off the field. I think it's safe to say defensively for the Knights, their heartbeat is right in the middle of the linebacker spot, 5'11", senior John Purdy. Purdy does a nice job. You need to watch him when you, uh, the Tigers are on offense. Keep your eye on, on number nine. Um, he is number one in tackles in the entire uh, SIAC with 116 and uh, just a force on defense. On the Tigers' side, it is senior night with it being the final game of the season and one of their seniors who is expected to be a main part of this team has been hurt this year, but a chance to talk about him, Drew Weinzappel. Drew Weinzappel, a four-year starter. Uh, started uh, as, a, as a freshman, uh, again injured the, in the second quarter against Jasper. Uh, he's done a, a great job uh, uh, o- over the years. Uh, actually uh, one of the primetime 25 on the cover of uh, Indiana Football Digest. And then also, much like Purdy is for Castle, middle of the defense for the Tigers. Middle of their defense is Alex Brochiers, a sophomore. It's only sophomore they're starting, and he's done a great job uh, coming up. And uh, just an all-around athlete, plays special teams, uh, and is a long snapper on kicks. So it's the 5-3 and three Castle Knights taking on the 5-3 and three Memorial Tigers. You see some of the uh, few seniors left being recognized. 16 seniors in total tonight. As the crowd continues to file on here at Enloe Field, another gorgeous night for football. We have been lucky this year, Mike. Uh, almost picture perfect every week. Yeah, just like uh, your batting average, nine for nine, uh, we've a thousand percent, uh, and another great uh, fall evening uh, weather-wise. And again, you talk about these seniors, sixteen of them, uh, and uh, a great record uh, since they've been uh, uh, at Memorial. Thirty-seven wins and just eleven losses. Nice broadcast brought to you by Wrights Memorial High School, providing an environment where God inspires, we educate, and students thrive since 1925. Check out our website at wrightsmemorial.org for more information. One note from Memorial High School for all prospective families or those interested in learning more about Wrights Memorial High School. They are hosting their open, or their annual open house this Thursday, October 20th from 6 until 8 o'clock in the evening. Meet the students and faculty toward the campus and learn how your student can gain an affordable education and join the memorial tradition. Again, that is this Thursday, October 20th from 6 until 8 o'clock in the evening at Wrights Memorial High School. So now we turn our attention to football. Kickoff is coming up next. It is Castle and Memorial here on Indiana SRN. Hey folks, good to be with you for tonight's game. My name is Andy Simpson and I'm a licensed IHSAA football official and welcome to Friday Night Football powered by Indiana SRN. On behalf of the 340 football officials, the IHSAA, the crew here at Indiana SRN, we hope you enjoyed tonight's game and more important, don't forget to subscribe to the Indiana SRN YouTube page. As you're watching tonight's contest, I'm going to show you a few of our signals that will help you better understand the information we are trying to convey. Touchdown. Safety. First down. Holding or illegal use of hands. Encroachment or offsides commonly known. False start or illegal formation on the offense or a free kick scrimmage violation. Face mask. Intentional grounding. Roughing the passer. Clipping. Illegal shift. Illegal motion. Illegal block. Pass interference by the offense or the defense. Delay of game. And the one signal we dislike and you as fans don't like seeing, unsporting. We'd like to thank everyone for tuning in tonight and following us on Indiana SRN. You can also tune in to the Football Weekly Show and Coach's Show every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. on IndianaSRN.org. Finally, if you've ever thought about becoming a high FSA www.ihsaa.org and click on the officials tab or call the IHSA office at 317-846-6601. Now sit back and enjoy the game.
Just about ready for kickoff. It is Castle and Memorial again with Mike Scavara. I'm Jevin Redman. Glad you could join us tonight on Indiana SRN. Fun matchup on tap tonight and uh, final week throughout the SIC, of course. At the top, Wrights has already clinched the regular season title. They are still undefeated 8-0. and zero. They're playing modern day tonight at the bowl. Modern day is 6-2 and two, and still a lot to be sorted out. Middle of the SIAC is... Yeah, Modern Day in second right now with a 6-2 and two record. And then three different teams are 5-3. and three. Castle, Memorial, and Jasper. Two teams are 4-4. Four and four. North and Vincennes in the matchup tonight. Mike, we mentioned Wrights at Modern Day. You also have Vincennes at Jasper, North at Central, Bossy at Harrison, and uh, still some things to sort out. Really two through five or even six. Yeah, the uh, entire top half of the uh, conference could be shuffled uh, several different ways uh, at the conclusion of uh, play here tonight. And, of course, uh, believe it or not, the 50th annual Indiana High School Athletic Association uh, state tournament is going to start next week. We'll be talking about that as the, the night progresses. Milestone victory Last Friday at Vincennes, the 600th in program history for the Tigers. Yeah, that was certainly a, a, a good, w long way coming as uh, Coach Hurley, and we talked about 124 wins uh, also for Coach uh, Hurt, but uh, a milestone. I think uh, it, it, there's only about a dozen and a half schools uh, in the entire state in the history to get 600 wins, so uh, it's a... Uh, uh, certainly uh, kudos uh, to uh, not only the current players, but uh, all the past players that have been playing football at Memorial since 1925. Let's talk about tonight's matchup from a team perspective for Castle and Memorial. Some keys on each side tonight. Defensively, both teams are going to line up very similar. The defensive secondary for uh, Castle will probably play a little deeper. And uh, their uh, linebackers, uh, they will blitz a lot more sometimes uh, uh, at than uh, the Tigers, so the offense for Memorial will look at that way, uh, where the Memorial defense, uh, uh, they're going to be probably playing hard against the run. Offensively, both teams will do the spread, but as we talked about earlier, uh, the uh, Castle Knights will like to run the football a little bit more than Memorial, who like to throw the football. So it ought to be an, an interesting matchup, uh, a good chess game here. And in past, uh, I know the last time these two teams played at Enlow, a very controversial play uh, at the end uh, uh, was the guy in or out. And we saw that last week with Memorial right. and uh, Vincennes. So an interesting uh, matchup. Uh, I think the media and the fans like to talk about it uh, a lot more than the coaches or the players just like to play. But an interesting matchup. Both teams very similar as we talked about. Uh, looking forward to a great, great ball game here tonight. Well, we talk about the two teams being rivals, but the uh, head coaches, I understand, are pretty good friends. Uh, oh, they, I think they talk daily, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, they share uh, uh, knowledge. Uh, there's there's no secrets between them two. They just like to line it up, and you stop and think about it. Uh, Doug Hurt played for John Lighty on the 1994 state championship team. He's a 1995 graduate of Castle, so he's got state final experience. Uh, Coach Hurley got to a semi-state, never played in the state, but he's coached in five of them and winning in 2017 and 19. So uh, up and down, uh, very similar and uh, great friends, but uh, for the next uh, two and a half, three hours, uh, uh, they're going to go after each other. So Castle won the toss. They deferred to the second half. Therefore, we'll see the Tigers offense on the field first and once again, tonight's broadcast brought to you by Wright's Memorial Athletic Booster Club. Join the tradition of supporting Memorial Athletics with the revamped and revitalized Booster Club. You can like us on Facebook for more information. Well, you look at the quarterback situations, very similar in some ways. The fact that, uh, you know, Matthew Fisher, uh, he did not really start until uh, the fourth game against Modern Day, where uh, uh, Braden Bishop, he's come in, and uh, really this is only his third game actually starting as, as a quarterback. Uh, he was one of their top receivers, so that can take away one of the re good receivers with Bishop playing quarterback. It ought to be interesting as uh, we're about to uh, get ready to play the ball on the tee and uh, great high school football here on Indiana SRN. And a pair of five and three teams trying to go into postseason play next week with a win. Tigers drew bossy round one. They'll be back here at Enlow Field. The Tigers win next Friday. They'll also be home week two against Jasper. Uh, Riker Cottonell will be doing the kicking with uh, Pierce uh, and uh, Caleb Elsperman and Porter Road uh, to receive the kick. 
Crowd still filing into Enloe Field. Pretty well filled up here on the near side for Castle. Memorial still filling up their side. Tigers trying to bounce back after a loss last year at the Castle Knights, and we are underway. Endover and kick will be returned from the 15, bobbled it by Hugh Pierce. He recovers, but Pierce can't go anywhere. He is gobbled up by the uh, Castle special teams, and a good start for the Knights as we see this Tigers offense for the first time this evening under sophomore quarterback Matthew Fisher, who comes in completing almost 70% of his passes, averaging 177 yards through the year, and there's a look at the Tigers' starting lineup brought to you by Rocka Bar Pizza. Yeah, he yeah, is uh, the leading percentage completion, and you look at that offensive line, they're going to have their hands full here tonight, so uh, uh, that will be uh, something to watch for as well. And again, for Castle's uh, defense, watch number nine, folks. He's right in the middle. Tigers' offense averages 24 points a game. They line up with Fisher out of the gun on first and 10. Porter Road, the running back. Fisher to throw in the first play of the game under pressure and throws it right into the turf. Around Porter Road, the running back who slipped out there. It's incomplete. Not the way I'm sure Coach uh, Hurley and his staff envisioned it. So good pressure there. On the flip side, the uh, Castle defense averages, or they allow almost 19 points a game. Trips wide receivers bunch to the far side on second and ten. Quick pass, bubble screen, caught trying to make a move as Luke Elserman, and he is swarmed by four or five white jerseys. A short gain will bring up third down and long for the Tigers as we can look at that Knights starting defense again brought to you by Rocka Bar Pizza. I hate him. Smith come up and uh, with the tackle there as uh, four down linemen, three linebackers, and a deep secondary. As uh, you've got uh, people uh, uh, on the defense of the top 17 tacklers uh, in the conference, Castle's got four of them. Tigers spread them four wide. Man in motion left to right. Now trips to the near side. That was Hugh Pierce in motion. They set up the screen. Rhodes got it. Plenty of blockers ahead. Open space to the 35-yard line. Big gain on third and 10. That goes for just over 20 yards and a Tigers first down. They invited the down four, and they all came in. A nice job. They went to the left side a little bit. Road catches it uh, behind the line of scrimmage. They go from the 15 all the way out to the 38. So a 23-yard pickup and initial first down of the contest. Road came in with five catches, 95 yards the entire season. Picks up a big first down for the Tigers on this opening drive from their own 38-yard line. Quarterback keeps it himself. This is Fisher. A rare run by him as he makes it to the 46-yard line. That's good enough for an 8-yard carry. Matthew Fisher, his longest run this year is 12 yards, and we haven't seen much of that. Uh, fake the dive, and uh, Gavin Leach made the stop. Now, in that previous play, that long play, we need to get some uh, credit uh, defensively as well. Coming back and uh, uh, making the tackle uh, was Aiden Salpetra, or else uh, Road, he would have been deep into Castle territory. Mentioned Leach made that last tack on the previous play. He's number two in this ninth defense in tackles. Second and two from their own 46-yard line. Road the running back again. This is Elsterman lining up in the Wildcat. He takes it himself, trying to juke in between uh, tacklers. Right around that first down stick. Needed two yards and appears to have the first down. So Petra along with Purdy. Coming into the game, uh, Purdy, a, a, a great defensive man as we've uh, uh, talked about. John, uh, he has been in double figures in all his four, eight games. In fact, he's got two games where he's tallied 20 tackles mm. each. He did two yards on that carry and got about two and a half for the first down. From the 48-yard line under center for the first time as Fisher. They give his off-right tackle. Porter Road storms through the initial line and crashes into Castle territory for a gain of about nine or ten yards. We'll see where they mark it. They brought in uh, Lewis Seward uh, as a fullback and just a basic dive off-right tackle. Road got great acceleration, got it into Castle territory, and picked up their third first down of this drive that started on their own 15. So it was good enough for the first down. This will be the first play from Castle territory, play number seven of this opening drive for the Tigers. From the Castle 42-yard line, they go back to Road, and good penetration that time with the Castle defense. He has stood up, and guess who was in there? John Purdy, the senior linebacker. 
along with a couple other guys. Well, Benny uh, Patterson along with uh, Aiden Smith were the first initial hit, and Purdy cleaned it up. Maybe a loss of a half yard. They'll go back to their wide receiver set now. Road comes in with 97 carries this year. Of course, he missed the first two weeks of the regular season, averaging 90 yards per game. Really ran the football well in the second half last week at Vincennes, which set up some deep shots for Fisher and his offense. And they had that 67-yard touchdown pass to Caleb Elstroman. On second down, pass comes near side. Well covered is Caleb Elstroman, but he makes the catch. It's a short gain to the 30 Eight-yard line for a pickup of four. Another third down for the Tigers. Good uh, time to throw, but uh, good defense there for Castle. Held them to about a three- or four-yard gain. That'll bring up uh, third down in about six. Remember, Caleb started the season at quarterback. He's actually number one in receptions after making the switch to the wide receiver spot after the second week of the season. Third and six, Fisher. In the flat, this is Rode. Head of steam near sideline. Hurdle's a tackler, and out of bounds he goes. We've seen Rode hurdle a couple of guys this year. Did it last week at Vincennes, and he gets near that first down marker. Zach Shermer, the collision. Let's see in a replay here. Look on the right side of your screen. Rode will get it. Gets a block out there from Collins, and then tries to hurdle to uh, Shermer, and gets it close to the first down. They give it to him. Say, Judging by that replay, look, they got well past that first down stick. To the 31-yard line. This will be play number 10 of the opening drive for the Tigers. They have absorbed about four minutes off the game clock. Very active, a good pursuit by uh, Castle's defense so far. This is Road up the middle. Stutter stepping through and then stood up after a minimal gain of a yard. In on the stop uh, was Leach uh, along with uh, Purdy and Patterson. Give him a yard. Leach is just a sophomore in this Castle defense. Six foot, 165 pounds. Second in tackles, fourth in tackles for losses. Second and nine for the Tigers from the 30-yard line. Three receivers out left. There's only middle man not being covered. Road again is dragged down behind the line of scrimmage. And flying in there and making that stop was 95, Aiden Smith. He's number two on this team and tackles for losses. No gain there, and it's third down. He also has got three quarterback sacks. Four down territory for Memorial Tigers. We'll be over five minutes in the start of this drive. And this is play number 12 of this opening drive. Same formation, three receivers out left. Fisher with a hard count, now looks toward the Tigers' sideline. Play clock inside of 10 seconds. Castle's defense adjusts. We get a blitz. They know what's coming. Fisher, quick toss, incomplete. Looking for Caleb Elstrom on that far side. And now it's fourth and ten. At that time, they switched Purdy from the middle linebacker position out to a right defensive end and made Fisher, I think, throw the ball before he wanted to. And they not only brought him, they brought another linebacker. So you had six uh, rushers and only five blockers. And you're in no man's land here at the 31-yard line. Not ideal to go for on fourth and ten, but you really can't punt either. I guess you could, but it's still worth going for here. But a long opening drive, and the Tigers keep it going. Fourth and long. Fisher has some protection now, flushed out of the pocket. Slings it, diving attempt, and it is caught. Is it a first down? Yes. Hugh Pierce made a sliding attempt. Castle claimed that it was bobbled and hit the turf. The official says good reception for Hugh Pierce, who came out of nowhere to make that grab, it and looked, it might be a first down. It looked like Shermer was going to intercept at number 20, and somehow he missed it, and somehow Pierce was able to grab it. Again, Hugh Pierce, the senior, comes up with a great job. Fourth down. Put a circle around that one, uh, Jevin, because that keeps the drive alive and gets Memorial into uh, close to the red zone. That was an 11-yard completion on fourth and 10. Drive continues. Tigers have taken almost half of this first quarter with the ball. They give this to Porter Road. Good cut in between the tackles. Right up the gut now inside the 10, dragging Castle Tacklers down to the 8-yard line. 12-yard carry for Porter Road. And they're in the 
Peace of Mind Counseling Red Zone. First and goal. Look on the left side. He looks like he's got room on the outside, but then he comes back inside, finds a seam, and comes down and gets dragged down inside the 10. Sixth first down in this drive, and uh, we are six minutes into the contest. What an opening drive. Can the Tigers finish it off? Same play. Road again, up the middle, makes a man miss near the end zone, and he dives in. Touchdown, Tigers. How do you like that? A 15-play drive to open up week nine of the season. Road crashes in from eight yards out. Six-nothing, Tigers. Same play. And this time he went to the outside. And so Porter Road uh, gets a uh, r rushing uh, touchdown. That's his seventh of the year. As uh, we'll have uh, uh, on to, uh, to uh, kick um, Pete Barrett, the freshman. Barrett 19 for 22 in PATs this year. Good snap, good hold. Kick on the way. Short kick, but it does the job. Tigers march down the field, 15 plays in just over six minutes. 7-0 Tigers on Indiana SRN. Team play drive, 85 yards for the Tigers. Six minutes, eight seconds, capped off by the Porter Road eight-yard touchdown run. And it's 7-0 Memorial with 5.54 to play in this opening quarter as Hinky will kick off for the Tigers. And by the way, that scoring drive brought to you by Simplicity Furniture. They are located at 1309 North Green River Road in Evansville. Have fun shopping for furniture with the Coslets, Father Pat and Sons, Chase and Kelsey. End over and kick, bobbled a bit around the 10-yard line, finally scooped up, trying to uh, scramble a bit for the Knights. On the return is Antonio Harris. He goes nowhere, and Castle's offense will be pinned a bit. Well, we saw Memorial fumble the uh, kick and finally retrieve it and get it on the 15-yard line. Well, guess what just happened for Castle? They fumbled it. Uh, they get it at the 15. Maybe uh, Castle can uh, return the favor and bring it back. Castle's offense brought to you by Rockabar Pizza. Their junior quarterback, Caden Gort Gordon, 6'180", pounds, completing 58% of his passes. He throws for just north of 100 yards per game. Well, it's actually Bishop who goes under center on this first snap. In the starting lineup, they had Gordon as the starter. Anyways, they pitch to the running back, Maximus McCool, and McCool gets five or six yards on his opening carry. Nice job that time of getting some good push on the right side. Yeah, it, again, Braden Bishop, uh, he's taken over at the quarterback's position as here the Rockabar defense uh, led uh, by uh, Carrick Johnson at the middle linebacker position. So Bishop goes under center. The uh, senior on a second and six, man in motion, right to left. That's Will Coleman. They pitch it near side. McCool has it again, and he is wrestled down for a loss. Good play by the Tigers' defense. That's a man we talked about in the pregame, Alex Brochiers. Yeah, the sophomore did a nice job. He's really coming on defensively. He gets leverage outside, sheds a blocker, and then just come on and tacks, tackles Max McCool for a loss. It's a loss of four, and it's third and ten now for Castle. Trying to avoid going three and out of the Tigers' offense. Went 15 plays on the opening drive for a score. Empty backfield now as Bishop goes out of the shotgun. They load up the right side with trips wide receivers. Play clock inside of 10 seconds. Bishop back to pass in the pocket. Rips one across the middle. It's caught shy of the 20-yard line and also shy of the first down marker. Tigers' defense swarms to Antonio Harris, a junior wide receiver who made that catch. It's fourth down. 
McGuire and Desmond Johnson on the stop. So that will bring up a punt situation. And uh, Braden Bishop uh, is the punter. So, again, he's a Swiss Army knife. Uh, he's filling in, starting as a wide receiver this year. He's filled in at quarterback. Now he'll uh, kick it away as uh, – Caleb Elsperman uh, deep for the Tigers to receive the kick. Now, Braden Bishop this year averaging just 28 yards per kick. And Caleb Elsperman back around his own 45-yard line. This punt is away. Fairly good hang time and a bit short. Fair catch called at the 49-yard line of Castle by Caleb Elsperman. So the Tigers will start in Castle territory. 29-yard punt, no return. So the Tiger defense forces a three and out and uh, gives it over to uh, the Memorial offense in great field position at the Castle 49. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Oakland City University. They are Southern Indiana's premier faith-based professional university. Enter to learn, go forth to serve. Contact OCU at GoMightyOaks.com. Castle defense who is on the field for a long time to start the game right back out there trying to figure out how to stop this Tigers offense. They give us DeRoe. He was busy on the opening drive and he stays busy here as he carves out a six or seven yard carry running toward the Tigers sideline. Landon Holder was the first to hit but uh, Porter Road uh, he's getting a lot of uh, uh, windshield time on the road for uh, Road as uh, picks up a good yardage from the 49 to the 43. Road also had a catch on a, a screen pass at opening drive that went for more than 20 yards. Trips near side for the Tigers on second and four. Looking for that screen pass again, throws it out. This could be picked off and it's incomplete. That was almost intercepted and taken to the house. Christian Schultz's senior read that well, and the ball was fluttered a bit out of the hand of Fisher. Put her pressure, didn't, throwing off his back foot, and right there, uh, Christian will look at the huddle tape uh, later on and said, Coach, I should have had that, and if he had that, he might have had six. Now Schultz has two interceptions this year for Castle. Third and four. What Castle's been doing is they're bringing down one of their safeties, so they got 10 men up on the line of scrimmage. It's Road up the middle, and he breaks a tackle. Far sideline 20, and Road angled out of bounds as Memorial is back inside the red zone for the second time tonight. Road doing some work here in the first quarter. Great acceleration. Basic play, running off left tackle. Can't find anything there, so cuts up the middle and breaks a couple tackles, gets out there, and finally uh, gets uh, run down out of bounds uh, by Zach Shermer. Uh, so he goes from the 43 to the 10, so a big 33 chunk. Tigers inside the Peace of Mind Counseling Red Zone. It is first and goal from the 10. Fisher back to road. Why not? Tries to cut it inside, and this time gobbled up for a gain of a yard. Well, Road, using what he did in the second half last week at Vincennes and starting right where he left off tonight. Well, he's getting close to 100 yards rushing, and we've only played one quarter. This will be the 20th offensive play for Memorial tonight. Castle's offense has ran three plays. Coming up on two minutes in the opening quarter, Tigers trying to make it a two-possession lead. With that eye formation, a tight end left. This is Donovan Baker right up the middle, has a slight seam, and he gets inside the five, down to the four, and now it's third down. Baker averaging almost five yards per carry. That is 47th rush of the year. Yeah, they mark it at the four. It was Road, an eight-yard touchdown carry on the opening drive. He got a breather there on that last play with Baker, the backup running back. And Baker still lined up along with Lewis Seward in the backfield. He'll offset the fullback Seward to the left. They give, well, they fake it to Baker. They pitch it out to Seward. Seward had a steam, rumbling, 
End zone, touchdown Tigers. Two drives, two scores. Lewis Seward with his first touchdown catch of the season. 13-0 Tigers, late first quarter. What a start. Now fake it to the running back. Seward, instead of blocking left, goes right and gets off his third touchdown of the year. First, as Jevin said, uh, on the pass. So a four-yard pass from Fisher to Seward makes it 13. Caleb Elsperm in the hold. Brashears the snap. Barrett the kick. And Barrett makes it 14-0. Tigers controlling this one early. 14-zip. All Tigers early, 14-0 Memorial. Just over a minute to go in the opening quarter. Scoring drive is brought to you by Simplicity Furniture. They are located at 1309 North Green River Road in Evansville. Have fun shopping for furniture with the Coslets. Father, Pat, and sons, Chase and Kelsey. Six plays, 49 yards, 2 minutes and 20 seconds. Lewis Seward, a four-yard touchdown catch. PAT made by Pate Barrett. Here is the ensuing kickoff. Angled toward the far side, returned from the 18-yard line, still on his feet past the 30 and crashing forward just shy of the 35 is Antonio Harris again on the return. And now we see the Castle offense for the second time tonight. A little bit more room. They'll start on their own 34-yard line. And I'm sure Coach Hurt does not like this 21 play to three uh, disadvantage uh, when it comes to offensive play possessions. Again, Bishop, their quarterback, he is a senior. Empty backfield, they spread him four wide. Bishop looking to throw. As time in the pocket goes across the middle, and that is his safety blanket, which is tied in Weston Eigner, leads the team in receptions, but misfires on that throw at second down. Yeah, he was 7 of 12 against Jasper for 87 yards and uh, 8 of 16 for 178 uh, yards and a couple of touchdown tosses against Central. So he's just kind of feeling, feeling his way uh, here in the passing uh, department. But down 14, uh, they might have to go to the pass a little more. They send Harris in motion, and they give it to Harris, looking for a space. Not much running room. Tough sledding there as he has stood up and then punished to the ground by the Tigers' defense. Gain of a yard or two. It's third and long. Yeah, on the bottom there was uh, for the uh, Tigers. Coming up uh, on the stop uh, was uh, Jack Brackett. 51, Jack Cassie, number 56, Kelton Farmer. Farmer, uh, along with Cassidy, also on the stop. It's officially third and nine. Bishop looking toward the night sideline. Play clock inside of 10 seconds now. Here comes the blitz, quick pass. Eigner has to make a couple men miss, and he can't do it. He's yanked down. Lewis Seward grabbed him around the wrist, or grabbed him around the waist, I'm sorry, and took him to the ground, and Seward might be injured as well as he is laying on his backside. It'll be fourth down for Castle, but that's not good news for the Tigers. Now Seward uh, doing double duty offensively and defensively, getting checked out. So looks like uh, they're kind of tending to his wrist area is what he's holding. So we'll step aside here. Seven seconds to go in the first quarter. It's all Tigers right now, 14-0. 
local economy and save more when you shop at the Pet Food Center. We have over 6,000 pet-related items for dogs, cats, birds, fish, reptiles, turtles, rabbits, hamsters, gerbils, and more. Anything you want for your pet, we've got it. Includes full lines of the best pet food, bird seed, a full line of heated pet products, pet clothing, toys, and more. Walk in, curbside pickup, shop online, and free local delivery. Anything you want for your pet, we've got it. Pet Food Center. Just seven seconds left in this opening quarter. It is 14-0 Memorial. And we had an injury on the last play on the Tigers' defense. Lewis Seward now up to his feet. Receives a nice hand from both sides, and he's a bit slow to walk off the field. Very important part to this Tigers' defense. He actually just had a touchdown catch moments ago on the offensive end. Yeah, he's really come on as a senior. He's one of the guys that have really blossomed this year. And... Uh, He's moving really slowly, that's for sure. Again, this one of five games in the Southern Indiana Athletic Conference rivalry game. Uh, Memorial and Castle, as uh, Bossy is at Harrison. North at Central, Wrights in Modern Day. And Vincennes is at Jasper. As Lewis served, being uh, helped off uh, by the uh, medical staff. Now Seward came in fifth in tackles, first in tackles for losses, and first in sacks. Also has a fumble recovery this year for the Tigers defense. So that'll bring up a fourth down in this drive. Uh, Going to end up in another three and out situation. And Memorial is already racked up uh, 134 yards of offense. And Castle just six here as uh, they start the clock, and we'll take a break after 12 minutes. Yeah, should have a castle punt when we come back after one. Memorial 14, castle nothing on Indiana SRN. Mel K, located in Evansville, Indiana, provides mechanical, electrical, and plumbing solutions nationwide. We deliver quality service to the industrial, commercial, and healthcare industries. If you have a big project, we bring big solutions. That includes designing and installing green energy systems that benefit your business. Our in-depth knowledge and commitment to safety make us the perfect partner in MEP contracting. Contact us for an estimate on your next project. Mel K, big projects, big solutions. A Wrights Memorial education is now more affordable than ever. If you fit within certain income guidelines, you could receive over $6,000 of tuition assistance. Find out if you qualify for an Indiana School Choice Scholarship or other tuition assistance opportunities. Your child, your money, your choice. Visit wrightsmemorial.org slash tuition dash assistance for more information. Castle's offense with a pair of three and outs to start tonight. And Memorial's offense, two possessions, two scores. That's why it is 14-0 Memorial. And we start the second quarter with a punt. Elstroman back deep to return. And he lets it bounce at the 35-yard line. Kicks toward that sideline. Takes a Castle roll inside the 15. Works out well. All the way down to the 8. Still rolling. Great punt for the Knights. That came from Braden Bishop, his longest this year is 43 yards. How far now, is that? That's going to make it uh, his uh, best because he, with the uh, hit and the roll, uh, it's a 57-yarder. He averaged 29 yards per kick, so some of that was done after the roll, but it still counts. Well, the first drive for the Tigers was 15 plays, 85 yards. Second drive was six plays, 49 yards. Road had the rushing touchdown from eight yards out, and Seward the four-yard touchdown catch. Seward 
has left the game for the moment with an injury on the defensive side. Appeared to be tending to his hip and ribs area. Hopefully he's okay. Here's Porter Road on first and ten. He has been busy tonight and pretty successful. Not so much on that carry a short gain. Couldn't avoid a couple of tacklers uh, defensively. Coming up was Gavin Leach. Leach also along with uh, Aiden Salpetra. We don't have stats in the moment. We'll try to get him at halftime maybe. But Road has two games this year where he's rushed for more than 100 yards. He has quite a few here in the first half. And coming in sixth in the conference and rushing. And he, as uh, Jevin has said, missed the first two games of the season. On second and seven, quick pass from Fisher comes near side. Elstroman tries to make a man miss, and then he is punished. But the Castle defense flag flew right around the line of scrimmage, and I think it's going to be a hold against the Tigers. And I'll tell you what, first flag of the game comes early in the second quarter by this crew. Crew of Eric Nielsen, Justin Akers, Jared Smith, Jeff Schlichting, and Jackson Strong. Still trying to get a signal from Castle whether to accept or not. Ball's at the 10-yard line. Seven different white jerseys rallied there. That's If you're a defensive guy, uh, uh, you want to have those kind of people fl flying the football, and that penalty was refused. So I think, not quite sure, but uh, I don't think they gained anything because Road had a couple yards at first possession, first play. Castle fans complain to move the ball back. Well, you don't when you decline the penalty. <laughs> That's how it works. Third and seven for the Tigers from their own 11. Castle trying to flip field position as well and get a stop here. Fisher under pressure. Screen pass Road looking for a block. Stumbles a bit. And then Road is tackled in the middle of the field. Would have been interesting if he doesn't stumble. He might have had a chance to pick up that first down. And it'll bring up fourth down for the Tigers. And uh, they're going to have to punt it away. Porter Road has been doing the punting lately. Let's see if he stays in there. The ball uh, resting on the uh, Memorial 15. So the first punt from the Tigers, Porter Road. He is averaging 36 yards per kick. Back around the 50-yard line is Jersey Wells for Castle. So they have a chance to get really good field position, trailing 14-0. Road gets the kick away. Wells lets it bounce, and it goes just past the 50-yard line, still rolling out of bounds. And the Knights will start from around their own 45-yard line. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Mel K. For all your commercial, mechanical, electrical, plumbing needs at Mel K. Big projects, big solutions. Well, that ends up being with the roll, a 42-yard punt, no return. They'll put it at the 43-yard line of the Knights. They're looking for their first first down on their third possession, three and out the first two. Tigers will have to have someone step up in the absence of Lewis Seward right now on the defensive side. See if Castle can take advantage of him being out. The give is to Maximus McCool, and McCool works his way to the 45-yard line, short gain of two. Joey Collins on the bottom. We have those many seniors uh, that they've got on that defense. Seven of the 11 seniors, uh, our defensive players are seniors. Second and eight, Eigner in motion, left to right, he gets set. On play action, they fake it to McCool. Under pressure a bit, coming near side is Bishop. Now he throws and it's picked off. Flying in and intercepting that pass is Jackson Draper, his second interception of the season. He's also got a couple of fumble recoveries, so four takeaways is here's here have Bishop rolling to the right, getting pressure from Jack Brackett, throws the ball, and then flying in there from his safety position is Draper. And just like that, the Tigers get a takeaway. So I was thinking maybe Castle had a chance to get on the board with a good field position at their defense. 
did the job. Deep in the Tigers' territory, but now Memorial gets it around midfield. Hey, some scores for you throughout the SIAC halftime. Whoa, Jasper beating Vincennes 27-6. That game is at Jasper. Into the first quarter, Wrights and Modern Day scoreless. Five minutes left, first quarter, North 20, Central nothing. Four minutes left, first quarter, Bossy 6, Harrison nothing. Here is Rowe, dump for a loss. Tag team tackle there for uh, Castle. As the two of their men up front, both Aiden Smith and Jacob Buchanan, pair of seniors. Big loss. Loss of five at second and 15. Yeah, they'll mark it uh, at the 42-yard uh, line. This drive starting at the 47. Fourteen nothing Tigers. Both their scores came on their first two drives of the night. Screen pass, road. Not many blockers on this side, and down he goes for another loss. They've gone that play quite a few times here in the first half. It's been successful until that moment. Castle's defense was ready for it, so. This drive going the wrong way for the Tigers. They are set up with a third and very long. They lost five the first play. They lost four that play. As uh, the Castle defense keeping uh, them in this game. 7.50 and counting here before halftime. As uh, if anything, that turnover, if the Tigers do have to punt it away, at least they got away from their own end zone and they have a chance to flip the field. Of course, Road got a punt blocked against Wrights. Uh, that went for a touchdown. Screen pass near side, caught by Luke Elserman, 45-yard line, and he's tripped up from behind. Good tackle around the ankles by Zach Schultz, the senior. Tigers did get a chunk of yards as they got about 10 on that play. It'll be fourth and nine or so for the Tigers, and they will have to punt, maybe, for back-to-back -back drives. Now they get it back to the original line of scrimmage. Could be a situation where you try to draw them off sides. It is fourth and ten. Fisher can punt. Or they're going to say, we're going to go for it and then turn it over our defense. Now he backs up, and here comes the punt from Fisher. And before the snap, whistles came from the near sideline, and timeout, Doug Hurt and Castle will take it with them. About halfway through the second quarter, 14 Zip Tigers. Oakland City University is a private Christian college at a state school price. Check out the Good Neighbor Scholarship that allows for a major savings on tuition and is available to any first-time student living within 60 miles of campus with plans to commute. Oakland City University, an affordable college education right in your backyard. Call today or visit this link to learn more about the Good Neighbor Scholarship. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. Castle had to burn their first time out of the half. Tigers set up here to punt on fourth and ten. Pet Food Center, they have locations on Evansville's east, west, and north sides, and also in Newburgh, as well as Owensboro, Kentucky. Anything you want for your pet, they've got it, Pet Food Center. I'd like to thank all of our sponsors and everybody who's contributed to uh, us uh, bringing here at IndianaSRN.org all the Memorial football games and against all the other uh, Southern Indiana Athletic Conference schools, Jevin. Now with this Castle game, we've seen every team in the conference, and good luck to everybody uh, uh, in uh, the uh, state tournament that starts up uh, next uh, Friday. We'll right, be right back here at Enloe Field as uh, Enloe, the home team for both the teams that we'll be covering next week, uh, Memorial will be playing bossy. So Road will punt for the second time tonight. Jersey Wells, deep to return for Castle. Road has his kick blocked. <laughs> Castle brought the pressure and they got to Road the second time this year. He's had his punt blocked and now got a wipe away the interception that Bishop threw moments ago, and Castle starts in Tigers territory. And John Purdy, number nine, watch on your top left side. He gets a hand on there. Uh, 
not running into the kicker, and the ball recovered by Castle. So no harm done by that uh, uh, interception. We'll see if Braden Bishop can regroup. Castle's offense still looking for their first first down of the night. With 6.40 to go in the second quarter. Bishop under center. The give is to McCool. McCool some running room. Middle of the field, 35-yard line. Back pedals a bit and then is pummeled at the 31-yard line. That's a gain of roughly 10 for Maximus McCool, who is just a sophomore. He came into the game, 82 carries, 9 touchdowns, averaging just over 7 yards per rush. And it is a gain of nine officially, second and very short. That was just a ninth play from scrimmage uh, by Castle Memorial. And the other side's got 26. But uh, deep in uh, the uh, Tigers' territory, their deepest penetration, a score here can makes it a one-score game. Give us to McCool again up the middle. He has a first down and more to the 25-yard line. Dragging a, a tackler, Tanner Grease came in and hopped on for a ride inside the 25-yard line. And now the Knights threatening for the first time tonight. Get that first first down. Get some lift by the defense. And uh, Memorial dominating, but just one play has uh, flipped the switch here for the uh, Castle offense. And there was a flag that came in during that tackle of face mask against the Tigers. We'll put it closer to the end zone for Castle. We'll see if it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard variety. We'll see when they march it off. Ball's on the 22-yard line. If it's a 15, they'll go to the 11. Now some discussion still being made by the officials. Finally gets going. And it's going to be half the distance, half the right? Distance. Yeah, 11-yard mask. So for as much as the Tigers have dominated this first half, Castle a chance to make it a one-score game here and feel like you're right back in it. The give is to McCool right up the middle, and he is stuck by Alex Brochiers. The sophomore linebacker came in. Hit him hard around the waist. Gain of two, and it's second and eight. That's yes, nice job coming in from his outside uh, linebacker position. Again, this drive starting uh, and a block punt. Second block punt uh, that kind of jump started uh, rights against uh, Memorial coming up with a 27 18 win. Maybe this might jumpstart uh, Castle. They gave it to the man in motion there, Antonio Harris. He cuts it back inside, another gain of two. And it's third and six now for Castle. Ball at the Tigers' eight-yard line. Brochure and Cassidy. And they've had a couple runs now. You might see maybe a play-action pass here. Again, with uh, Bishop, uh, this is only his third start as a uh, quarterback. Uh, still learning the playbook. Still trying to figure out things offensively. Last week, the Tigers' defense was very good inside the red zone at Vincennes. Look for Eigner here on the right side at the end, number 85. The five wide receivers set empty backfield. Third down, they throw it. There is Eigner. He's in. Touchdown, Castle. Eigner's sixth touchdown catch. The senior tight end gets the Knights on the board with 4.34 to go in the second quarter. It's a 14-6 game. Nice job by Eigner. Getting himself open, a couple of defenders. Look on the right side, gets a release off the line of scrimmage, right on the goal line, and just jumps in. And just like that, Castle's back into the ballgame. PAT will be kicked by Riker Cottmull as timeout was called by the uh, Tigers. Their kicker, Elena Quinn, is injured, so she will not be kicking tonight, but Quinn... A good story in her junior season, 24 for 24 on PATs. But again, she's out tonight, and Riker Cottonell will kick the PAT after we come back from this timeout. Right now it's 14-6 Tigers, 4.34 to go here in quarter number one. Or quarter number two, I'm sorry. For more than six years, Telemetry Sports has been working with the NFL and multiple college football teams as a data and technology provider. 
Players' speeds and accelerations that they are providing us is generated using computer vision, the same technology as autonomous vehicles. As you watch these players, keep in mind that over 18 miles per hour is very fast and impressive for a high school and college athlete. And for people that are on social media, on Twitter, we saw Indiana SRN put out the telemetry sports on the Caleb Elstroman 68-yard touchdown catch last week at Vincennes. He reached 17.9 miles per hour. That's a cool feature, a part of these broadcasts each and every week. So thanks to telemetry sports. A couple of first downs, one by run, one by the pass, and uh, a touchdown pass for uh, Bishop. That's his third of the season. So, again, it's Riker Cottmill, the uh, junior, who will kick this PAT to try to make it a seven-point game here late in the first half. The holder is Caden Gordon. Kick gets blocked. That's a big play to keep it now an eight-point game. 14-6 Tigers, and we will step aside here on Indiana SRN. Why do our students love Wrights Memorial? Because our academics prepare students to succeed in college and in life. I believe in educating our students to their highest potential. I believe in creating a welcoming, faith-based learning environment. And I believe a memorial education is the foundation for a bright future. Explore the endless possibilities at Wrights Memorial. Mel K, located in Evansville, Indiana, provides mechanical, electrical, and plumbing solutions nationwide. We deliver quality service to the industrial, commercial, and healthcare industries. If you have a big project, we bring big solutions. That includes designing and installing green energy systems that benefit your business. Our in-depth knowledge and commitment to safety make us the perfect partner in MEP contracting. Contact us for an estimate on your next project. Mel K, big projects, big solutions. Eight-yard touchdown pass from Braden Bishop to senior tight end Weston Eigner, his sixth touchdown catch of the season, and for Bishop, just his third touchdown pass. Yeah, Weston, a nice job getting himself open. It was a five-play, 40-yard drive, two minutes and six seconds, set up after the blocked punt. Also blocked the punt of Porter Road and then also had a block on the PAT. We'll see that after this kickoff. That's why the score is 14-6. Kickoff goes to here. Pierce from the 10-yard uh, line. Pierce strolling far sideline 20. Flag flies in from a mile away. And uh, we'll see what that flag is all about. But chance to look at that last blocked PAT that kept it an eight-point game here. We'll see who got in there. I was like in the, right in the middle there. We'll have to find out maybe at halftime. Uh, so who did get the block? Number might have been you, you Pierce. Pierce, yeah. Yeah, he does line up in the middle there. He's very athletic. So they're sorting out this flag on the uh, kickoff. Again, we've only had two flags up to this point. Both have been against the Tigers. Do we have an offsides maybe against Castle on the kickoff? That would make sense considering where the flag came from. Also, there is an injured Castle Knight player walking off the field. 53, Gavin Leach. He's an important part of their defense, as we talked about. Yeah, a couple of defensive linemen, uh, one for each team as uh, Lewis Seward went out. And must have been against Memorial because they move it back to the 20. So a 10-yard penalty. I'm not quite sure what. Maybe a block in the back. So it was Castle's turn to have three and out in the first quarter. Now the Memorial offense has sputtered here in the second quarter. And uh, three and out for this Castle defense. Give it back to the offense. They have a chance to uh, get things even. Castle defense has done a better job against Porter Road on the ground. And also they have snipped out that screen pass the last two times. Castle's had a good rush all game. That's why they've been going to the screen. Back to the ground game. Porter Road, space far sideline, and he 
runs over a tackler around the 30-yard line. Appears to have enough for the first down gain of 11 for Portero. That was like a bowling ball. Head of steam. Now he moves it out to, to about where the uh, kickoff was. Return. The market at the 31. Nine first downs for the Tigers. Two for Castle. But it's only just a one-score game. 14-6 to six in favor of Memorial. They score on their first two possessions of the game. Castle's scored on their last. Well, they're going to measure whether or not this is the first down. I thought in live action he got it clearly. They must have spotted it about a yard back of where I thought they were going to. Anyways, it'll be first and ten or second and very short after the run by Road. Well, that's the perfect time for you to tease the halftime interview, Mike Scott. That's right. Uh, we've got uh, uh, one of the uh, fall uh, coaches uh, in tournament play. Uh, it's going to be championship regionals. Bill Veith, Jr., the uh, boys' uh, soccer coach, as it's a first down signal. As... Uh, He'll be coming and talking to us at halftime. And, of course, uh, uh, a longtime uh, coach. Of course, his dad was the other coach. Uh, so the Veith, senior and junior, and the soccer coaches for uh, boys uh, at Memorial. Be- even before it was IHSA uh, uh, affiliated. But uh, we'll get the thoughts of Bill Veith as uh, they move into uh, regional action uh, tomorrow up in Washington. Also a busy day tomorrow for Tigers Athletics is... Memorial Volleyball will be in action. Sectional, second round, and Gibson Southern. So a gain of 10 for Road. It's first and 10 for the Tigers. On play action, Fisher has to dance out of the pocket. Good strike, far sideline, caught by Collins. Jukes one tackler, and then he is lassoed out of bounds past the 40-yard line. Looks like he stepped out around the 42. It's a gain of either 10 or 11 yards there. Good move after the catch by Leo Collins. Uh, let's not forget, uh, well, let's look at this first. Fisher steps up, throws a, a bullet. Nice catch. Good evasion move by Collins. And they'll pick up another first down as uh, Angie Lensing's girls soccer team is also in regional play. So 11 yards on that catch. Back-to-back first downs. First reception of the night for Leo Collins came in. 23 catches, just over 200 yards this season. They line him up in the backfield this time. And the give is to Road. Up the middle, spins out of one tackle, but can't get away. As he is brought down to the 45-yard line, a pickup of three for Porter Road as we are now inside of four minutes left here in the first half. Need a little more sense of urgency for a Memorial Ball on the time clock under four minutes as uh, Jacob uh, Buchanan on the bottom of that pile for the Castle defense. You have to be somewhat careful, too, because you really want to avoid giving Castle an opportunity to score again here at the end of the second quarter. They will get the opening kickoff of the third. Here is a four-wide receiver set, trips to the near side. One-on-one coverage out to the right. But they run it with Road up the middle, 50-yard line into Castle territory, twisting his way down to the 45, and a Tigers first down. Porter Road starting to gain some more traction on this drive. Great acceleration and getting up to the second level as they get it into Castle territory at the Knights 44. This drive started on the Memorial 20. This will be the sixth play of this drive for the Tigers. On play action, Fisher moving to his right. Mm -hmm. Pass down the field and staying inbounds is Caleb Elstroman as he hauls down that reception at the 32-yard line, 12-yard strike. There were two guys that were open on that play. Yeah, I thought he'd throw to Collins, but Fisher, uh, that's why he's out there. and We're up here talking. Uh, Caleb was open. Looks for Collins short. Caleb Elstroman long. Nice catch, going out of bounds, stopping the clock. Another first down, 12 first downs for the Tigers in this first half to two for Castle, but still only a one-score game. Here is Road again, back to the ground game, and nowhere to go. He is yanked to the turf behind the line of scrimmage. First man in there was Aiden Smith. Loss of a yard there for Road.
Both these teams five and three on the season, trying to head into postseason play with the win. And also finish in the top half of the SIC standings. Talked about it two through six, a jumbled mess. Pass near side, that is Pierce. And Pierce takes it inside the 25-yard line of the 24. It is a gain of nine. Short of the first down, I believe. It'll be third and a yard or two. Jack Schirmer, the first to hit. Clock under two minutes. Tigers have two timeouts to work with as well. Ball on the left hash mark, right-handed quarterback. Might see a run pass option going right. As uh, Pete Barrett, the freshman kicker, warming up on the sidelines. He might be in the game here. As long this year as 34 yards for Barrett. Play clock down to seven. Tigers need to hurry up to the line of scrimmage. Five seconds to get it off. Fisher makes note of that. Gets it off with a second to spare. Road makes, so well, he almost made a man miss, but a good tackle. And that was Aiden Smith again who tugged him down. Loss of a half a yard for Road, and now it's fourth down and three with 80 seconds to go. Well, this would be a 42-yarder, maybe just out at the periphery of uh, Barrett's opportunity. And they're going to uh, maybe run the play clock down and... Uh, Maybe call a timeout? No. They're going to go, go for it. They'll bring in Carrick Johnson at fullback. The block for Road. And before the snap, timeout is called by Castle. This is their second of the half. Let's take a timeout as well. 54 seconds to go. Second quarter. Tigers have a fourth down when we come back. Welcome to the Book Broker your go-to business for any collectibles that you may require. Founded in 1975, we provide our services throughout Evansville, Indiana, and the surrounding areas. We specialize in comic books, sports cards, games and videos, and much more. With a knowledgeable and committed team, we strive for excellence and provide quality services. Throughout the Evansville area, we are the go-to used bookstore for books and video games, or sports cards and vinyl records, and we make sure that you get the services that you need. As a used bookstore that specializes in collectibles, we offer a variety of products to fit everyone in the family, making sure that you get the most out of every dollar spent. For more information, call 812-479-5647 or stop by our website for more information. Come in today and escape your reality. Before this fourth down play from the Tigers, some scores throughout the SIAC. Harrison on top of Bossy, 14-6 in the second quarter. North is thumping Central, 28-0. Wright's leading modern day, 14-zip. And halftime, Jasper on top of Vincennes, 27-6. Ball on the left hash mark. You got to get about 4-5. or five. What do you call? It is four, fourth and three. Johnson lined up as the fullback, rode the running back, on play action, Fisher, wide open, down the field is the fullback, Herrick Johnson, touchdown Tigers! They fooled him on fourth and three, 25 yard connection, that is Johnson's first touchdown catch of the season, that's why they fooled him. And uh, <laughs> guess what, two touchdown passes by Fisher, both the fullbacks, play action, Nobody picks up Carrick Johnson. He just goes untouched right down the middle of the field. And just like that, the Tigers get another touchdown pass. Fisher, in all of his starts, Jevin, has thrown at least two touchdown passes in every game. What a play call by Coach Hurley. Kick on the way. And the kick is good for Barrett. So three for three on PAT tries. Memorial comes up big. On fourth and three, they hit the jackpot, 25-yard touchdown catch, and it's 21-6 Tigers. The goal isn't graduation day. It's a better every day after. It's the first day in your new career, your first pay raise, the fifth day of that week-long vacation, it's the first paid holiday home with your family, or the day of your last car loan payment, much sooner than you thought. At Ivy Tech Community College, we don't just care about your degree, we care about your life. Let's get started at ivytech.edu. 
can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. Well, put a star around or a circle around that play as fourth and three from the 25 yard line. Tigers go for it, and it is the fullback, Carrick Johnson, with the 25 yard touchdown catch. As the ensuing kickoff is fumbled a bit on the return for the Knights is Antonio Harris. He gets out past the 30 around the 35 yard line, and Castle will have 41 seconds to work with and only one timeout. But Mike, a 10 play. 80-yard dry, 3 minutes and 47 seconds, just as you felt the momentum was starting to swing toward the Castle sideline. The Tigers recaptured that momentum with an impressive drive. 85 and 80-yard drives, their first and third touchdown drives, a 49-yarder, uh, the other one. As uh, I've got unofficially Castle, and they're going to tack on uh, these last 47 seconds as they're going to take a knee going to the locker room. Uh, if you do that, uh, and on the 47 seconds, Castle will only have the ball six minutes uh, and uh, 18 seconds the entire first half. So that quarterback kneel down should take us to the end of the second quarter as they stop the clock for a moment, but now it runs. No big deal. And they'll reset the play clock as well. They shouldn't have to snap it, I wouldn't think. I'm going to do one more time. Not sure what it is a 40 second play clock, right? Or is it 25 in high school? I should know that. It's 40. <laughs> That's what I thought. Not sure why they had to snap it again. Anyways, it is halftime here at Enlow Field. 21 to 6 Tigers. They lead it. We'll recap the scoring for you before we go into the halftime break. So the Tigers, they started the opening drive. 15 plays. 85 yards, six minutes and eight seconds. It was Porter Road from eight yards out, made it 7-0 Memorial with 5.54 to go in the first quarter. Then after forcing a three and out, the Tigers came right back with a six-play, 49-yard drive, two minutes and 20 seconds. It was Lewis Seward, a four-yard touchdown catch. It was his first touchdown grab of the season, 14-0 Memorial, late first quarter. Then Castle got on the board after a block punt, set him up well. At the Tigers' 40-yard line, they went five plays, 40 yards, two minutes and six seconds. Eigner with an eight-yard touchdown catch, and then the PAT was blocked, so it was 14-6 Memorial. And the final score came just moments ago before halftime, a 10-play, 80-yard drive by the Tigers on fourth and three. It was a 25-yard touchdown catch by Carrick Johnson, his first touchdown grab of the season. That drive took three minutes and 47 seconds. Barrett again with the PAT, makes the score 21 to six Tigers. And uh, Mike, your thoughts here on the first half as the Tigers are in front by 15. Well, Memorial got a good running game from uh, Porter Road and uh, just a little blip there uh, as in the second quarter getting the punt block allowed uh, good field position and Castle to score. But uh, give uh, the Tigers credit. Uh, they convert uh, they convert on a couple fourth downs uh, mm -hmm. in this first half. And uh, they that that drive, uh, 80 yards, 10 plays, 347. And uh, a play that uh, we haven't seen all year. Uh, uh, we've seen it twice. Passes out to the fullback. Uh, maybe one other time we've seen it. But uh, a great opportunity for the Memorial Tigers. But uh, Castle and no quit in the Knights. Uh, look for Doug Hurt and his staff to uh, come back. And Castle will get the opening kickoff to start the second half. At the Book Broker, you can buy new and used comics, sports cards, and sports memorabilia. Get your favorite gaming and video games, and also Blu-ray and DVDs. Of course, you can get books at the Book Broker, located at 2717 Covert Avenue in Evansville. Halftime show coming up next. Tigers in front, 21-6 here on Indiana SRN. Football fans, welcome back to Friday night. To pure spirit. To pure sport. Welcome back to high school football. Fans, I'm IHSA Commissioner Paul Knighty. And I just want to say, welcome back. This is Friday night. 
This is Indiana High School Football. This is your IHSAA. When I'm at a Super Bowl and I walk in that stadium at kickoff time and I see that football sitting down there on that field, I get goosebumps because uh, I sewed that football. I am Jane Helser, I recently retired. I started working at Wilson on April 13, 1966. I was 19 years old. I put an application at Wilson. I got the job, never thinking that I'd be there for 48 years. I enjoyed what I did, so I just stayed. The Wilson Football Factory here, it's actually like a secret. I was raised about 20 miles from here and never even knew this place was here. We make NFL footballs year round. We manufactured the ball for every Super Bowl and every point scored in the NFL since 1941 has been scored with a Wilson football. Jane was the longest tenured employee when she retired. I would get up at about 3.30 in the morning to be on the job at 5 a.m. I had to oil up my machine every day. I could sew about 150 footballs a day. A football is made from a big piece of leather. It's cut out like a cookie cutter, and that panel is uh, split down to a certain size. They're stamped with a logo, and then there's a lining that's put on it to hold the shape of a ball. When I get the football, it's in four panels. There's the top two panels. Those two are sewed together, leaving the opening. Then I sew the bottom two panels together. After the lace holes are punched and it, the seam are pounded down, then I sew the full section together. The rule of thumb is you don't make a good football sewer until you run a needle through your finger. One time the needle just slid up underneath the foot, stuck in my finger. They put an ice pack on it, took me to the doctor, he cut it out, and I went back to work the rest of the afternoon. I'm tough. <laughs> The turner gets the nice job of turning it right side out. Then it goes to the lacer, he or she, uh, puts a bladder in it and then laces it. After it goes to the lacer, it's molded. Then the ball is ready to be inspected. Sewing the football together is probably the most important quality as far as manufacturing. The ball has to have perfect seams. The ends have to line up perfectly and therefore I think sewing is probably the most critical job in manufacturing the ball. We do not want to change the product in, the, in its total because the most important thing is the integrity of football. So our thing's consistency, make a consistent product that feels the same to the player every time they pick it up. There's a cold swing. I tell people that I've been to nine Super Bowls, but I've never been to an Ohio State football game. <laughs> I've been to Miami twice, Tampa twice, Arizona twice, soon to be the third time, uh, New Orleans and Indianapolis. I'm just a worker that got a job when I was 19 years old and, and stayed there and was able to try to do the best job I could. And I've been rewarded greatly for it. All I ever wanted was to feel loved. He said he loved me. My friends told me it wasn't a big deal. They thought he was so cool, but they didn't know what he wanted me to do. All I ever wanted was to feel loved. 
You have no idea the kind of pressure I felt to take things to the next level. Things were moving so fast. I was basically the only person in the freshman class who hadn't done it yet. So we did. I loved him. I thought she loved me. My health class had CPR at school. I stayed after class to talk with the instructor about it. They showed me that it didn't have to be that way. They showed me that I get to make my own choices. There is another way. That's the best thing CPR gives you. Another way. A better way. A healthy way. Sometimes you don't see it because you're in your own world. But they don't make you feel bad. They talk to you like a real person. And they save kids from really unhealthy decisions. They tell the truth and they know what they're talking about. So yeah, my life was different. I started to choose the better way. I honestly don't know where I'd be or what I'd be doing had it not been for CPR. Becoming a licensed sports official is a great way to make a positive difference in the community and support the over 160,000 Indiana student-athletes that participate across 21 IHSAA sports. Sports officiating allows you to stay connected to the game, become a role model for our young student-athletes, earn extra money, and support the patrons and communities of our IHSAA member schools. To learn more about becoming a licensed IHSAA official, log on to IHSAA.org officials today. We are at halftime at Edlow Field on senior night as the Memorial Tigers lead the uh, Castle Knights by a 21-6 score. And it's my pleasure as a halftime guest, uh, Bill Veith Jr., the uh, boys' soccer coach uh, at uh, Memorial. Well, Bill, you've got a big uh, match uh, tomorrow uh, in the regional championship game. But before we even take a look at your ball club for this year, let's just talk a little bit about uh, uh, soccer. It's been a family affair. I know your dad coached for four years before you took over as uh, you know, Bill Veith Sr. and now Bill Veith Jr., 37 years. Just uh, your thoughts about uh, soccer at Memorial. Uh, well, it's nice to be with you, Mike, um, and uh, it's nice to see the score line of today's game so far. Um, y- you know, it's it's been a part of me ever since I can remember uh, Memorial Soccer and always wanted to represent Memorial, uh, played basketball as a freshman, but that was as far as my basketball career <laughs> went at Memorial, <laughs> and uh, I think all of 5-4 probably did me in there. Um, but uh, we have enjoyed our uh, uh, Memorial Soccer, and we've enjoyed the tradition we've been able to build, much like all the other sports of Memorial. Well, you've enjoyed a lot of success. Uh, let's just take it by the numbers here, probably here in the next uh, 10 or 12 seconds. Okay. Uh, well, we've won 16 different state championships, uh, some of those before the IHSA sanctioned the sport, uh, some of those after. Um, our first one was in 1979. Uh, didn't seem like that long ago, but by gosh, that's a long time ago. And then uh, we're hoping to add one to that, our quest for the 17th title this year. Well, you've made it a family affair with your dad and your sons as well. You've got to be happy with the fact that you played high school football memorial and uh, you coached your, your, your boys. Yeah, um, a, a great experience. I know coaching your kids can be tough at times and i'm sure it was at our household uh but uh i was lucky enough to have four boys uh my wife sarah and i have four boys that uh first of all got to go to memorial and experience that whole thing uh but all four of them played soccer for us um and uh really proud of them for that and uh Kind of blessed that I got the chance to spend that time with them. Talking with Bill Veith, the uh, Memorial Boys soccer coach. Well, playing soccer at Memorial, uh, uh, as you said, uh, a privilege and an honor, and, and you're doing a lot of things right. Uh, doing things right at Memorial is, uh, you know, one of your key components. Just talk about uh, someone playing uh, soccer for Memorial. What, what does it take to be a, a soccer player for the Tigers? Well, I, th- I- I'm, I'm going to guess this is going to go across the board for all of our sports and our extracurricular activities. Uh, we want people that are committed. We want people that are disciplined. 
they're representing not only their families and themselves, but our school um, and our alumni uh, that are all over the country. Uh, and so we, we ask a lot of them, and I, I think there's no different than the football team that's jogging out on the field now. A lot is asked of these young men, but, uh, boy, a lot is returned to them in the long run, and I think our players uh, fall right into that. We, we ask them for discipline, commitment, hard work, all those things that, uh, that you need in life. They're building blocks. Well, this uh, 2022 edition uh, has done well. Uh, what's your record? And uh, uh, you've, uh, t- take us through a tournament play. Yep. Well, uh, right now we're 14-3-2, uh, uh, and two. Uh, an incredibly hard schedule of, uh, of our six non-conference games. Uh, all those teams were ranked in the top 20. We've played two from Chicago, uh, two from Louisville, one from Lexington. Uh, really ch- reached out to challenge our team. And quite frankly, our team was really a young team at the beginning of the year. We had more than half of our players had never played a varsity minute. Wow. Uh, and uh, uh, we started the other night in the regional semifinal, two freshmen uh, at midfield. I-, I can't remember a time we've done that. Um, and uh, three of our five goals were from freshmen on uh, Wednesday night. So they're not freshmen anymore. They've played a full season. They've got some experience. Uh, we're, th- we're really happy with our team. We play in the regional final on uh, tomorrow, Saturday, uh, up in Washington against Providence. Uh, we expect a really hard game. I mean, there's only eight teams left in the state in each class now, so everybody's on a win streak and everybody is uh, playing well. Um, we play tomorrow at uh, 3.30 Evansville time. Uh, just before us are uh, Lady Tigers play, who are having a fantastic season. Um, I, th- I think they're 19-0-1. I've lost track of how many games they've won because they've won so many. But uh, I think they're 19-0-1, and I would suspect heavily favored in tomorrow's regional final. I think they play Washington. Uh, but we're looking forward to having a, a Lady Tiger and uh, Men's Tigers a doubleheader up in Washington. Uh, final comment, uh, your thoughts about this uh uh, soccer uh, team that you've got uh, what makes them uh, uh, unique uh, or different or maybe the same you know I think every team is unique uh, but but we have a lot of talented players and I told them that at the beginning of the year I, I really believe this is one of the most talented from top to bottom teams we've had but the big the big but behind that is talent is not everything and you've got to add those other things you've got to have belief You've got to have work ethic. You've got to be able to get some breaks here and there. Uh, and I think over the season we've learned some of those things. We've learned work ethic. Uh, we've learned to believe in each other. We've certainly had some breaks go our way. Um, but uh, the, the, at the core, they're really a talented group, and hopefully that shows tomorrow. Well, Bill, I appreciate you taking the time and uh, uh, spending time with us uh, talking about uh, your soccer program. Good luck to you. Good luck to Angie Lensing tomorrow. And uh, just uh, another opportunity for uh, the Tigers to advance in uh, tournament play. And uh, congratulations uh, uh, for your uh, lifelong commitment uh, uh, to Memorial Soccer. Thank you, Mike. Good to see you. And fight, Tigers, fight. That's right. And Bill Veith, the uh, junior, the uh, boys' soccer coach uh, here at Halftime Memorial, where the Memorial Tigers football team leads 21 to 6 we'll be back with the second half right after these words We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. Our students love Wright's Memorial. Memorial helps me find the right rhythm on stage and in my education. I believe in developing my craft. 
I believe in building a community. And now, I believe I can hit the right notes in all aspects of life. Showcase your talents at Wright's Memorial. We're just about ready for the uh, second half. And uh, what's the uh, public address announcer's name again here at Enloe Field? Sam Tenbart. Uh, I enjoy his humor. The uh, random score updates from <laughs> schools you've never heard of, and they're never close scores. It's great. <laughs> That's why I was chuckling. But anyways, here it's 21 to 6. Tigers lead a castle with Mike Scavara. I'm Jevin Redman. And as we uh, look ahead now to the second half, the Knights will get the ball first. And really outside of that one drive, the 40-yard uh, scoring drive after the block punt, Heinz's offense has been shut down. Yeah, they have had. I've got unofficially Memorial 221 yards of offense, and uh, uh, while the uh, Castle Knights have 55 yards and a big uh, uh, discrepancy in uh, plays run in the first half uh, uh, as well, as I know you've got some individual stats uh, for the Memorial Tigers there. So these two teams uh, trying to get to six wins in the regular season, finish up six and three before Sectional play starts next week, and we were kind of looking at some of the scores elsewhere. And uh, the one notable score, Wrights was leading modern day 14 to nothing at last check, and the Panthers trying to go 9 and 0. Yeah, 9 and 0. Oh. Of course, Jasper went 9 and 0 oh and lost in the first uh, round of the tournament. So, uh, Jasper, uh, they'll be taking on Central uh, uh, next week uh, in the tournament, while uh, uh, also, and then we're talking about 4A, and then. Uh, We'll have uh, Boonville and Harrison uh, taking each other, and Jasper uh, gets the bye. As uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, all the other di different classes, as uh, uh, as we uh, go on later on. Well, the Tigers some uh, numbers offensively. Running back Porter Road, 16 carries, 90 yards in the opening half. Also had four catches for 29 yards. And sophomore quarterback Matthew Fisher was 13 of 17 for 112 and two touchdowns. And his two touchdown passes were to two guys we didn't really expect to probably grab a score tonight, Lewis Seward and also Carrick Johnson. Yeah, and Road uh, got the first touchdown, so it ought to be an interesting. You know, you stop and look at all the discrepancies in the numbers. It's 21 to 6. Uh, Castle uh, still uh, in this ball game. Uh, they get a quick score here, can cut it down to a, a one-possession game, and uh, anything can happen. As uh, we are ready for second half action, uh, as uh, the Memorial Tigers looking to go six and three, uh, Castle win, they would be six and three. All right, so here we go, second half underway. Joseph Hickey with the kickoff, end over end kick. It's a short boot return from around the 20 yard line. The 25 near sideline 30, and out past the 40 yard line. Solid return for the Knights. McGuire. Popping up there was uh, Jersey Wells on the return. Yeah, McGuire and Jackson on a great. Wells uh, uh, coming up, a nice job. Just a sophomore. Got a uh, good field position for the Castle. They had the return right on, uh, right in front of us. Well, Castle's got to find a way to get Maximus McCool going a bit. Oh, he hasn't had too much success on the ground. Bishop has been picked off once, and that was by Jackson Draper. A run on the I formation with a bunch. Drive starts from their own 41-yard line. This is Maximus McCool, and McCool with a good gain on his first carry of the second half, shot off just shy of the 50-yard line. It's a pickup of seven for the sophomore McCool. They overload on the right side, and uh, I don't know if it was a design cutback left or not, but uh, uh, no backside pursuit there by the Tigers allows McCool to get good yardage. So it's second and three, same formation again. They motion Eigner left to right, who has a touchdown catch tonight from eight yards out. They'll run it again with McCool. He comes near side, gets the first down. 
And he is forced out of bounds. There to greet him was Sam Brackett, senior linebacker. But the Knights move the chains on another carry by McCool. Just a third first down for uh, Castle so far. Just turned away the uh, third quarter. It's hard to believe we're wrapping up the regular season here tonight, not only here in Evansville, but throughout the state of Indiana. It feels like just last week we were kicking off the season at Jasper. Exactly. It goes quick for sure every year. Well, formation that they have not used the first half, so the Tigers are going to have to adjust their defense a little bit because they'll bring the left uh, counter back over to the right. They've uh, run it twice. Now maybe they'll throw it. Nope, back to McCool on the ground. He trucks forward, keeping those feet moving. Stretches out to the 41-yard line. Decent gain of four for Maximus McCool. Came in averaging 87 yards per game. Tanner Grease uh, in on the stop. Again, when you get four, five, six yards of care, why not, uh, why not keep on running it? Keep running until they st- stop you. Now they'll adjust the formation out wide a little bit and no blocking back. Bishop fakes it the man in motion, goes to McCool, and McCool is greeted there after a couple yard carry. It was Jack Brackett, the first man that hit him, and the first third down of the second half for the Castle offense. And this drive started on the Castle 42 yard line uh, in the Tiger territory at the third, 39. Play that also stands out big that we'll probably go back to a time or two is the block PAT making it a 15 point game instead of 14 that could loom large down the stretch. Now they'll uh, break the formation, four receiver set, actually with the tight end. On third and four, Bishop will run, tries to get inside, and he is tackled short of the 35 yard line. He needed four yards. And he only got a couple. It'll be fourth and short for Castle, and I'm sure they'll go for it. Kelton Farmer on the bottom for Memorial. Yeah, it's going to be fourth and one. So a big play early in this second half, especially if you're a Castle fan trailing by 15 points. Trying the hard count. Now it's a quarterback sneak, pushing the pile forward. Still moving, and they get the first down with ease. Still going inside the 30. Refusing to go down is Braden Bishop. He's only 5'11", 160, but a strong man on that quarterback sneak. First down, Castle. In a football game, a rugby match uh, broke out. (laughs) But uh, good job there. Castle already, Jevin, has matched their first half total of first downs. They had two. Now they in this drive, they've got two. They spot it just inside the 30-yard line. About three minutes gone in this opening drive of the second half of the Knights. On play action, Bishop looking to throw. Goes across the middle, and a line drive throw is short of his target. Jersey Wells, sophomore wide receiver who is streaking across the middle of the field at second and ten. A little play action again. uh, uh, Bishop, again, an athlete. uh, Plays basketball as well. Uh, just uh, has not had a lot of reps, and uh, the ball just uh, thrown a little bit short. And with this running game, uh, you know, Coach Schertz says, uh, we're going to see if our weight room uh, trumps your weight room. Bishop out of the gun. McCool to his left hip here on second down. High snap, Bishop wants to run. He was greeted by several blue jerseys, and down he goes for a big loss. Jack Cassidy, the senior, was the first man there. Joey Collins also there, but uh, that play was really helped out by Kelton Farmer. Watch watch on the left side here. Kelton Farmer does not allow Bishop to get outside, turns him back inside, and that allows Collins and Cassidy to come up with the tackle for loss. It's a loss of seven. Third and 17 now. Backed up at their own, or backed up at the Tigers' 36-yard line. This will be play number nine of this drive to start the third quarter. Bishop waits for the snap. Now he takes it. Rocking back to pass. Slings it across the middle. Eigner has it go through his fingertips. It's incomplete. Throw is maybe a little bit to Eigner's right or behind him. Couldn't pull it in. It's fourth down. So this drive stalls for Castle. 
Which Hurt will play the field position game. Try to get uh, the Tigers inside their own 10. I think if it wasn't 4th and 17, even in this territory, you'd think about going for it, but no chance on 4th and 17, so they'll punt it away. Tigers defense gets a stop as Caleb Elsherman is back deep to return. He's standing inside his own 10-yard line. Memorial has not had a long uh, punt return uh, all season. Bishop with the punt, low line drive kick. Fair catch is called. Quickly got to Caleb Elsherman, who comes up at the... 12-yard line, and that's where the Tigers' offense will start for the first time here in this second half. Scott Stratman, attorney at Laws, an experienced and affordable Evansville attorney for over 28 years. Call Scott Stratman, 812-425-5345 for help with litigation and estate and nursing home planning. Need legal advice? Call attorney Scott Stratman, 812-425-5345. That drive, opening drive of the third quarter for either team. Eats up four minutes and 25 seconds, and Memorial will start the ball deep in their own territory. The market at the 11. Remember last week, the Tigers started the second half off with a lot of Porter Road. Well, Road had a successful first half tonight, 16 carries, 90 yards. Lines up in the backfield on first and 10 and gets the call. Road up the middle, shifty runner. Is able to carve out several yards, make it a four-yard gain to the 15. Aiden Salpetra. One of the top ten tacklers in the conference. Better pick up a four for Road. It's been a pretty clean game tonight in terms of penalties. Only a few flags have been thrown. I only have Memorial for two penalties, and, and I don't think I have Castle for any. On second down, they fake it to Road. This is Elsherman. They are lined up in the Wildcat. And strolling the far sideline is Caleb Elsperman. He was shoved out of bounds. Some of the Tigers faithful were putting for a late hit, but no flag. I know he's short of the first down. It'll be third down and four or five yards. Yeah, it's at the 16, so it'll be five yards. They drive again, starting at the Tiger 11. Important here for the Tigers to at least get a first down or two to help with field position a bit. 6.50 to play, third quarter, 21-6 Tigers. Fisher on play action, steps up in the pocket, throws it, and it is caught by Caleb Elsterman, and that is enough for the first down. Fisher had some room to run as well, but we've seen him hesitate a time or two this year terms of scrambling up the middle on those type of plays, but his throw works out to Elsperman. Like a long handoff. Mm -hmm. And Elsperman <laughs> coming in, uh, uh, starting the year as a quarterback, uh, finishing the year as one of the top receivers in the SIC. Ladies and gentlemen, this just in from the concession stand. Holy cow, there are one dollar hot dogs at the concession stand. So they spot at the 23 yard line, fresh set of downs. Play clock down to five. Fisher hands off, and Porter Road is stacked up for another loss. Benny Patterson, the sophomore, the first to get in there. It's his third tackle for loss this year, and it's a loss of two. Good job that time by Patterson. I think he came in unabated uh, to the running back. Patterson listed as a six foot one, 195 pound sophomore. Ball near the left hash mark. A lot of room outside to the right as they'll bunch all three receivers there. On second down, Fisher's pass. He rifles one to the far side. Leo Collins with a stiff arm, but then he's unable to advance it much further after the catch. Landon Holder did a nice job of uh, making sure Collins couldn't advance on the initial catch, and that allowed his uh, defensive pursuit to... Uh, Shut that drive down, play down. Loss. Well, it was second and 12. Almost looks like maybe oh, no yeah, game okay. now. That's right. Boy, my eyes fooled me. I thought I at least got a few yards. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize. That's right. They had lost yardage on yep. the play before. 
Well, Fisher's converted several third downs tonight. Collins in motion right to left on his third down and 12. Pump fakes near side, scrambling to his right, screen pass, Porter Road has a blocker in front, tries to squeeze through, and Road gets the 30 or the 27-yard line. Gain of six or seven yards will be fourth down and probably a Tigers punt. At number nine, uh, John Purdy on the stop. So Road now will have to punt it away to uh, Jersey Wells. Last time he tried to punt, he got it blocked. Castle will try to bring the pressure again and get to Rowe. See if he can get the punt off. It was a second block punt in the last three weeks. Play clock down to two seconds. Road gets it away just in time. Here is Jersey Wells from the 35-yard line, trying to stretch it near side, almost tripped up. And now he is brought down from behind after a couple yard return to the 37. Castle fans wanting a face mask. 38 yard punt. And about a four yard return. So with 350 to go. Castle will set up shop. Start on their own 37. They started on their own 42, their first uh, possession. So first and 10 for Castle from their own 37-yard line. Knights offense has been fairly stagnant tonight. Bishop under center. McCool in the backfield again. And they give it to McCool right up the gut and nowhere to go. Right into the gut of a couple of Tigers tacklers. Got back to the line of scrimmage, no gain. And when Hurtig along with Kelton uh, Farmer Hurting coming in. Uh, he'll be playing uh, in uh, Ohio next uh, fall as uh, he's got a scholarship to Miami of Ohio in, a, in, the, in the MAC. So he lost a yard, so it's second and 11. Bishop drops back to pass, steps up in the pocket, slings it across the middle, and it's caught by his tight end, Weston Eigner, the senior. To the 41 yard line, completion of five yards, and it's third and six. I say this, and we'll probably get burned, but really, Castle hasn't had too many threats down the field, even attempts. Well, again, it has to do with the inexperience of Bishop. Uh, there, he's just learning the formations, and some of that has to do with the pressure being applied as well. The Tigers looking to uh, blitz. Here comes the pressure. Pass goes to the tight end again. Back-to-back -back catches for Wes Eigner. And he is at the 46-yard line. It's a completion of... He's about a yard, half a yard short. Six yards, so it'll bring up fourth and short. And almost would think he'd have to go for it here, down 15 points late third quarter. They'll bring in a fullback, Musgrove, as a blocking back. Remember last time they did a quarterback sneak and got six or seven yards. Yep. One of their better plays of the night. We'll see if they do it again with Bishop under center on fourth and short. They motion Eigner from right to left. He gets set. They hand it off to McCool, and McCool tries to stretch to the outside. Again, only needed a half a yard, and he gets that for a castle first down. Drive continues. And 21-6, get a score here for the Knights. Could make it interesting. And they won 21 to uh, seven last year, and nobody scored in the, in the uh, fourth quarter. Uh, nobody scored yet here in the second half. With 147 to go in the third. So fresh set of downs now as Bishop goes under center. We'll see if they go back to McCool on the ground. They don't on play action. Bishop fires near side. And again, it is Eigner, his third catch on this drive. That goes for 11 yards. Back-to-back -back first downs for Castle. They're on the move. They had Harris short and Eigner deep. Both of them were open. Went and got the extra yardage. Good blocking. Rolls him out to the right. Gives him extra time to throw. 
Right on the spot there. Good tackle by uh, Draper, but not after the uh, Knights pick up the first down. I have them unofficially their first first down via the pass. From the Tigers' 42-yard line. Bishop wants a throw again on play action. Gets out of a sack, still on his feet. Ball is loose on the turf, and one of the linemen for Castle plops down on it. Good recovery by Will Brocker, the 5'11 senior right guard. It looked like Bishop ran into one of his own teammates trying to elude the sack and almost lost the ball. Yeah, Jack Brackett comes in there, uh, rather Joey Collins, and then Brackett comes in there and he bangs up uh, against uh, uh, the uh, uh, fullback. Uh, uh, that was uh, Musgrave. So fortuitous that they uh, retained possession. Lost 16, or I'm sorry, they lost six yards. It's second and 16. Another pass play setting up the screen too high for Eigner. He has been a popular target all season and on this drive. Unsuccessful there. Third and long with 27 seconds to go in the third. Man, why not? Uh, coming in, he had 82 catches and 1,288 yards and 16 touchdown receptions. He's got one here tonight for their only score. See if the Knights can chip away and set up a chance to go for on fourth down. It's been the eighth play of this drive. Trips to the far side. Bishop setting up another screen pass. McCool has it. Some space to the 40. McCool had a steam near side, not able to stay in bounds before he is shoved out by Carrick Johnson. A big gain on third and long. First down, Castle. Good job that time uh, setting up the screen, getting blockers. And McCool, so you can step out here. And uh, they get it. A couple of uh, missed tackles. And then he accelerates the sophomore down the sideline. And if uh, Carrick Johnson doesn't push him, uh, that could have been six. Well, I thought the Tigers' defense had him contained after he caught that screen pass, but somehow was able to slither through and pick up a large chunk of yards. The Tigers' 24-yard line. Now they pitch it to McCool right up the middle, rumbling forward inside the red zone, down to the 19, a pickup of five, and that should take us to the end of the third quarter. Castle trying to make it. A one-score game on this drive. They'll have a second and five for the 19 when we come back. 21-6, Tigers after three. Support the local economy and save more when you shop at the Pet Food Center. We have over 6,000 pet-related items for dogs, cats, birds, fish, reptiles, turtles, rabbits, hamsters, gerbils, and more. Anything you want for your pet, we've got it. Includes full lines of the best pet food, bird seed, a full line of heated pet products, pet clothing, toys, and more. Walk in, curbside pickup, shop online, and free local delivery. Anything you want for your pet, we've got it. Pet Food Center. Why do our students love Wright's Memorial? Because I can grow stronger on the field and in my faith. I believe in my teammates. I believe in my classmates. And through Christ, I believe I can accomplish anything. Come live your faith at Wright's Memorial. Tonight's Tigers broadcast is brought to you by Royal Express Car Wash. Heath, Pete, and Tina Rupp are the owners of Royal Express Car Wash and proud sponsors of Memorial Football. For a clean car, visit their locations on the west side of Evansville on Pearl Drive or 1201 North Fulton Avenue. Castle trying to make this a game again. They're on the move, down 21 6 Time of possession. I had Castle unofficially in that first half, only having the ball six minutes and 22 seconds. Uh, they have already... Uh, had it here in this uh, uh, first half uh, for uh, uh, almost eight minutes. And they're in the red zone. Certainly going to be four down territory. Again, the winner of this game will go to six and three. The team that does not win will be five and four. Wrights is leading modern day, so they can be six and three. And Jasper is uh, leading Vincennes. So one of these two teams in modern day and Jasper could be all tied for second at 6-3 and three in the Southern Indiana Athletic Conference with 
Wrights, uh, if they continue to uh, lead with a perfect 9-0. and Well, the Knights picked up a first down on a third and 16 screen pass to Maximus McCool. That's been the biggest play of this drive. Eigner has a couple of catches as well. This is a second and five from the Tigers' 19-yard line. They pitch it. This is Purdy, who plays a lot of defense, and he gets the carry here. Gonna Might be brought a... back with a hold, and this could be the first flag against Castle tonight. Now, Memorial's only been flagged twice. Memorial was up there uh, almost a double, a double figures one game and uh, close to it on the other. So both these uh, officials uh, uh, not having to throw a lot of flags because they've been pretty pl clean game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Purdy comes in. Uh, the senior, giving him a chance to, of course, he's an athlete. And he's carried the ball a few times this year, so they'll mark it off 10. And that one flag was from behind the line of scrimmage about three yards, so in essence, a 13-yard penalty. Backs it up to the 32-yard line, second and 18 now for Castle, just underway here in the fourth quarter. With Mike Scovara, I'm Jevin Rabin, a part of the Indiana SRN crew. Empty backfield. Bishop. His pass across the middle. He's got his tight end again. Eigner inside the 10-yard line. Big hook up there. Eigner with his fourth catch on this drive. And the Knights are set up with a first and goal. Nice job there. It's a replay. Plenty of protection. Throws just over their outstretched hands of uh, Carrick Johnson. Alex Brashear tackles him, but it's first and goal. So first and goal from the nine. Back to the ground game. This is McCool. He comes near side. Trying to get that angle inside the pylon, but he stepped out of bounds around the two-yard line. It's a gain of seven for Maximus McCool. And this next play for the Knights will be the 12th play of this drive, their longest drive of the night. And trying to cash in here and make it a one-score game. As far as time of possession, the tale of two halves. Again, Memorial had it over 17 minutes. Memorial's only had the ball three minutes and 45 seconds in this second half. Going the eye formation. Look for McCool. Off the block of Musgrave. From the two-yard line, McCool tries to stretch it left side, and he gets to the one. It'll be third and goal. Hartig and Carrick Johnson. On the stop. McCool in search of his 10th rushing touchdown of the season. And Tigers the last couple of weeks have been good inside the red zone. Trying to make another stand here. They'll need two more stops. Same play. Quarterback sneak. And does it work out? Yes. Touchdown Castle. From a yard out, Braden Bishop. Gets the rushing touchdown, his fourth rushing score of the season. And right now it's not a one-possession game. With the PAT pending, it's now 21-12, early fourth quarter. That was a 13-play drive. Yeah, starting from on their own 37. Now again, this is their backup kicker, Riker Cottmel. Their starting kicker, Elena Quinn, who was spotless on the year. She's out with an injury. Cottmel had his first PAT blocked, this to make it an eight-point game. Kick on the way, and the kick is good this time. So it's 21-13 as Castle gets on the board on the 13-play drive, 10-21 to go on Indiana SRN. You want a career that will transform your life while you change the lives of others by helping them live well. With a health or exercise sciences degree from IUPUI School of Health and Human Sciences, you will gain an in-depth understanding of the healthcare industry while preparing you for a variety of graduate and professional programs in health. And with Indy as your classroom, you will have clinical options within leading hospitals right in our backyard, as well as a degree from Indiana University, reputable leaders in the healthcare industry. It all starts here. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service.
Castle makes it a one possession game. Thanks to a 13 play, 63 yard drive that took five minutes and uh, 29 seconds off the clock. Bishop, a one yard touchdown run on the quarterback sneak his fourth rushing score of the season. PAT was good from Cottmel and it is 21-13 Tigers. Some scores elsewhere real quick. During the fourth quarter, Jasper leading Vincennes, 43-13. One minute left in the third quarter. Wrights 14, modern day 7. Into the third quarter, North 42, Central nothing. And four minutes left in the third quarter. It is Harrison 21, Bossy 12. Castles had the ball, uh, Jevin, 23 plays to eight from Memorial in the second half. Been a flip of the uh, first half for the Tigers. Dominated that category, at least in the first quarter. Kickoff return by Hugh Pierce, had a steam to the 25 yard line, and Pierce carrying a tackler past the 30. Better hang on to that football. Hugh Pierce, he does. Marked down at the 32 yard line. Well, Moral Tigers scored three of their five possessions in that first half. This is only their second possession of the second half. Thanks to Ivy Tech, a sponsor of tonight's broadcast. You belong at Ivy Tech Community College. With five times to start each year with flexible scheduling, there's always a great time to begin at Ivy Tech. You can join them for Tuesdays at the Tech. Memorial one first down in the second half. I have Castle with six. Still over 10 minutes to go in this game. Road on first down, right up the middle, twisting his way to the 39-yard line. It's a healthy gain of seven for Porter Road, who had 90 rushing yards in the first half, of course, quite in the second half because the offense has been on the sidelines for the most part. So Petra and Purdy on the stop, but Coach Hurley will take six, seven yards on a carry on first down. We've got Donovan Baker in at fullback now, third different fullback. They've had tonight. Here is Road. Up the middle again to 50. Road is loose, 40. One man left to beat 30. He beats that man. 15, 10, 5. Long rush. Touchdown, Tigers. 62 yards from Porter Road. That's that basic play that they've run all night off tackle. Watch it on the left here. He'll fake right and then cut back left and just accelerate as all the defenders came up bunching up the line of scrimmage. Porter Road gets his second touchdown and more importantly gives, uh, if you're a Tiger fan, breathing room. What a deflating play for the Castle sideline. They felt they're right back in the football game. And then boom, a big run by Porter Road puts the Tigers back in front by two scores. As before the snap, Castle jumped off sides on the PAT. They might take it, but still kick it. For Rode, with that rushing touchdown, it is his seventh Rushing score of the season. He now has three games in which he has ran for more than 100 yards. So three of the seven games he has played in. After the penalty, Tigers still kick it, and the kick is good from Pate Barrett. 28-13 Tigers, early fourth quarter here in the final week of the regular season. Becoming a licensed sports official is a great way to make a positive difference in the community and support the over 160,000 Indiana student-athletes that participate across 22 IHSAA sports. Sports officiating allows you to stay connected to the game, become a role model for our young student-athletes, earn extra money, and support the patrons and communities of our IHSAA member schools. To learn more about becoming a licensed IHSAA official, log on to IHSAA.org slash officials today. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at IndianaSRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now, at IndianaSRN. Well, after no scoring in the third quarter, fourth quarter started with a bang. Castle makes it a one-possession game on the Bishop 
quarterback sneak, and then the Tigers two plays, 68 yards, and a 62-yard rush by Porter Road. Puts them back in front by 15. Uh-oh, trouble on that far sideline, and a wise choice by the Knights at 67, Cole Bowen. Kicked right at him, fumbled it, and just wisely falls on it. Scoring drive brought to you by Simplicity Furniture. They're located at 1309 North Green River Road in Evansville. Have fun shopping for furniture with the Coslets, Father Pat and Sons, Chase and Kelsey. Castle's offense got rolling their last drive. Thanks in large part, Winston Eigner had five catches on that drive. We'll see if they try to target him more. Going to the air, they heave it deep down the field, right around the 40-yard line. Leaping catch by Jersey Wells, a sophomore. Had to come back for it a bit, but adjusted well. And Castle says, here we come now. Going with the long ball. We hadn't seen that from Bishop. Again, plenty of time. Fakes the run to McCool. Steps back. Rainbows it over a couple defenders. And Wells, who... Uh, now playing receiver because of uh, Bishop playing quarterback. He had just over 100 yards receiving. He gets a bunch there from the 23 of Castle to the 35 of Memorial. Throw it again on first down. Near side and a strike short of the 25-yard line. So back-to-back -back completions as this one goes to Jersey Wells. Got a 10-yard gain as there were some extra critical events after the whistle. Short of the first down, it looks like, so a gain of nine. It'll be second and one. You might see uh, Air Castle here this last uh, eight and a half minutes. So it's second and one as Bishop goes under center. McCool lines up as the running back again. They've been going to the air quite a bit of late. Castle has down 15 points. This time on the ground, McCool gets to the line of scrimmage, busting forward down to the 15-yard line, and a flag flies in, possibly a face mask. But that was on second and one. Gain of about 12 for McCool, and he'll get a few more yards tacked onto that. All of a sudden, this game has found some offense. Yeah, if you're a Memorial fan, you're still holding your breath, even though you're up uh, by 15. <laughs> It'll be half the distance from the 15-yard line. So it'll be first and goal for the Castle Knights. So they're inside the 10, first and goal from the 8. Just over eight minutes to go in this contest. Yep. Each team scored uh, a touchdown with... Under a minute, 56 seconds it took in between those scores. Purdy lines up as the running back. They give it to him. Near side. He is at the five, and he sneaks through. Did he stay in bounds? Yes. Touchdown, Castle. Back and forth we go. Lightning quick, four-play drive, capped off by the Purdy. Eight-yard rushing score, and we're a PAT away from making it a one-possession game again. And for Purdy, that's his first rushing touchdown of the year. Had a lot of first tonight, a couple of uh, first catches for a score in the first half for the Tigers, and now Purdy gets a rushing score. Cut Mel. Another big PAT to make it an eight-point game. Riker will... Try to get it within eight. Kick is blocked, and it's short. That's a big play. So it stays two possessions with 7.58 to play. The second blocked PAT tonight for the Tigers. And they lead 28-19 here on Indiana SRN. I'm Keith Myers, Vice President of Indiana SRN. Thanks for joining us. Do you know Indiana SRN broadcasts 350 games a year? All sorts of sports? Yeah, we do. Hard to believe, isn't it? Indiana SRN loves to put student athletes first on our website. If you're a business out there, we probably could help you too. Contact us at coach at indianasrn.org. Grandma from out of state thanks you. 
mom and dad who can't get to the game thanks you as well. In fact, our athletes watch the games over and over again. Our military has enjoyed the games as well. So sit back and enjoy the game. It's Indiana SRN. Scoring recap for the Castle Knights. Four plays, 77 yards and 89 seconds. Purdy, an eight-yard touchdown run, capped it off. But biggest play was that block PAT, so Mike still a nine-point game. Well, they got some big chunk yardgers on a couple of those pass plays, especially that one to Eigner. I think I had unofficially 38 yards. A lot of time remaining, and uh, you go back history-wise this last decade, there's been a lot of twists and turns uh, uh, in the storyline uh, for a ball game between both of these teams. I think we might uh, have the same here tonight. Maybe be alert for onside kick. Here it is. Short kick. Loose around the midfield strike. Castle says they have it. And I think they do. I was about to say be alert for the onside kick. And uh, Wes Castle Eigner. snuck one in there. Wes Eigner. So here's a look at it again. They break from the huddle. Popped it up perfectly. Had a Tiger player there to scoop it up, but he couldn't do it. So not only does Castle get the ball, they get it in Memorial Territory at the 47. Well, so they are certainly still alive. It's another uh, twist and turn <laughs> in the chapter of uh, Castle versus Memorial. And this Castle offense has found their groove to their last two drives, a 13-play, 63-yard drive, and then their last scoring summary was four plays, 77 yards. Bishop may be gaining some confidence as well, throwing the football. He's had a couple of long strikes in the second half. They're coming at you again, five wide from the Tigers' 47-yard line. Dropping seven. Bishop goes across the middle. It's Eichner again, the tight end, and he's stuck at the 37-yard line. It's a gain of nine, second and one. I think we're going to see a lot of Bishop to Eigner here in this last uh, seven and a half minutes. We've seen a lot of it already. Mm -hmm. Don't have the official scores. He probably has to have six, seven, eight catches here tonight. On second and one, Bishop. Rifles one, caught first down at the 34-yard line. Wells. Sophomore Jersey Wells with a tough catch. He was popped pretty good after the reception. First down at the 34-yard line, just over seven minutes to go, and Tigers leading by nine. Fresh set of downs. If you're a Tiger fan, you're looking for a takeaway. Haven't called McCool's name lately, the running back, as they've been going to the air. And they will again here on first and 10. Across the middle, through the fingertips, and it is picked off by the Tigers. Right place, right time. Carrick Johnson with his first interception of the season. Another twist and turn in this game, and the Tigers seize momentum right back. Harris had the ball, popped away. Good time being pressure that time from Brackett. In his hands, pops up. Carrick Johnson, right place, right time. He's had a touchdown uh, reception. Now he gets an interception. Tough break there for Bishop. Antonio Harris couldn't haul it in, so now the Tigers will try to milk some of that clock with the ball leading by nine. 6.57 to play. Get ready, Porter Road. He gets the carry on first and 10. Squirts through and tumbles past the 30-yard line to the 32. It's a gain of five for Porter Road. Road had a big 62-yard touchdown run early in this fourth quarter. At the time, put the Tigers in front, 28 to 13. Castle has scored since, but had the PAT blocked for the second time tonight. Tigers in no hurry, but. They're going to need to break the huddle quickly as the play clock is down to seven seconds. 
Fisher with three seconds, gets the snap off, and hands off to his running back again, Road. Shifty runner, 40-yard line. Road into Castle territory. Far sideline, and he is finally brought down to 39-yard line. A flag flies in from behind the play. Even if it's against Memorial from where the flag was thrown, he'd still have the first down. Went from the Memorial 31-yard line out to the Castle 40. Basically, same play. This way, on going right, but then cuts back left. Makes a man miss. And uh, maybe a block in the back. Uh, it's interesting. I mean, from the replay that we saw, there was really no contact where the flag was thrown. They were just running down the field. It's still going to be a, a first down. Mm -hmm. It's a 10-yard block in the back goes from the 31 to midfield so a 19 yard pickup just the third first down in the third in second half for the Tigers halfway through this fourth quarter now second block in the back they've also had two face mask penalties Best thing for the Tigers, this clock is moving under six minutes. And Road closing in on 200 yards rushing. Each team has their full supply of timeouts left. Road has been a workhorse tonight, and he is gobbled up there behind the line of scrimmage. He'll good, lose a pair. Good penetration by the Castle front. Loss of two for Road. Right now, ball protection and keep that clock running as a focus point for Memorial. And even if you don't pick another first down, he'd at least flip the field a bit to where he could punt and try to pin Castle deep. Ball on the almost the left hash mark. A lot of room to roll Fisher out to the right. Maybe a pass or run situation. Baker lines up as the fullback. They give the running back road, though. Off left tackle now brings it back middle of the field. And he pinballs his way into Castle territory at the 49. It's a pickup of three. And it sets up a third and nine. Clock still moving, coming up on four and a half to go. An exciting ball game. We anticipated it. Memorial jumped out early. We're up by 15 on a couple of occasions. But no quit by Doug Hurt's Castle Knights. Again, they'll have a week off mm -hmm. uh, as uh, they're going to travel to Floyd Central in two weeks. Play clock down to five as Fisher gets the line of scrimmage on third and nine. A handoff to Road, trying to find a seam. Now he does, explodes forward, and he gets six yards to the 43-yard line. We'll bring up third and three, four even to go. They might keep Fisher in, and uh, again, he's a punter. Put him in that short punt formation because uh, it's first down is under five yards. Also, you know, they're going to put him under center, though. Also a chance to maybe draw him off sides, too. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe call timeout with one second to go on the clock. Play clock down to eight seconds. Fisher looking toward that Tiger sideline, and now... Head coach John Hurley will burn his first timeout of the second half. Let's take a break with them. Tigers in control right now. 28-19, just over three minutes to go. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. Oakland City University is a private Christian college at a state school price. Check out the Good Neighbor Scholarship that allows for a major savings on tuition and is available to any first-time student living within 60 miles of campus with plans to commute. Oakland City University, an affordable college education right in your backyard. Call today or visit this link to learn more about the Good Neighbor Scholarship. Tigers in front, 28 to 19, with three minutes and 27 seconds to go. Let's we'll see if they are punting out of the timeout. They have a fourth and three. 
from the Castle 42. Big thank yous, uh, as always, to our uh, All-American production crew, uh, Ben Wood and uh, Eric Eaton. Thanks to both of these schools uh, for Memorial. President uh, Christian Mosick, Principal Aaron Schmidt, AD uh, Matt Weber, Assistant AD Samantha Myers, John Hurley, Head Football Coach, and Patty Van. Um, um, administrative Assistant Principal Jim Hood from uh, Castle, uh, AD Brandon Taylor, Doug Hurt, the head coach, and Rebecca Wilcox, the assistant. Now Tigers act like they're going to go for it. They do on fourth and three up the middle. It is Porter Road for a first down. Coach Hurley rolled the dice a bit, and it pays off. First down, Tigers, and that could be your dagger. Yeah, Castle going to have to use their timeouts, and with a down by nine. It's a tall order. Remember the Tigers had that big play on fourth and three from the 25-yard line for a 25-yard touchdown pass right before the halftime break. That was a huge play in this game. They go for it again on fourth and three here and pick up the first down. Clock continues to move. Three minutes to go. Two backs lined up is... Road here as he gets the call. Road slips at the initial line of scrimmage, and there's the first timeout called by Castle. Keep it right here with 2:47 to go. Again, big thank you to again to uh, Ben Wood and Eric Eaton, and coming down from Indianapolis, the uh, home area for uh, IndianaSRN.org. As uh, big thank you to all of our sponsors all season long. Here again, reminder that uh, Memorial is uh, committed to. Uh, uh, carrying uh, Memorial uh, in uh, the uh, IHSA Tournament Road uh, as uh, the uh, Memorial Tigers uh, will be back here at Enloe Field next Friday night in the Class 4A sectional to uh, take on uh, host uh, Bossy as uh, a lot of uh, football throughout the state of Indiana. 316 teams in the state of Indiana uh, will be playing in uh, 5A and 6A. They all get buys. Uh, so there'll be uh, one through four A's uh, playing uh, next Friday, and um, after that uh, first week, uh, you know we'll uh, we'll say goodbye to uh, probably uh, about uh, uh, what uh, 125 schools. Mm -hmm. So the Again. Tigers will have a second and nine coming out of this timeout. Castle can stop the clock two more times. Vincennes Lincoln in three A. They'll go to Gibson Southern. As uh, Pike Central, excuse me, Perry Central will travel to modern day uh, in 2A. As uh, North, uh, again, they're uh, uh, going to host uh, uh, Floyd Central. I, I was wrong. Their castle goes to New Albany. Second and nine. Here is Road again. He's had a magnificent game. And he bulldogs his way to the 30 for four more yards. It'll be third and five. Timeout Castle. This is their second of the half. And do want to give one note as Wrights Memorial High School will have their annual open house coming up. For all prospective families or those interested in learning more about Wrights Memorial High School, they're hosting their annual open house this Thursday, October 20th, from 6 until 8 o'clock in the evening. Chance to meet the students and faculty toward the campus and learn how your student can gain an affordable education and join the memorial tradition. Again, that is this Thursday, October 20th, from 6 until 8 o'clock at Wrights Memorial High School. Yeah, Memorial Tigers, uh, two minutes and 38 seconds from going six and three on the year. And when you stop and look at their season, when it started 0 and 2, uh, Coach Hurley uh, made some personnel changes, got some personnel back healthy. And um, as a result, uh, they've been able to uh, come away with, uh, if they can hold on this last 238, six uh, wins out of the last seven games. Well, they started 0-2, as you mentioned, and even that week three game against Central. Central has really struggled this year, but Memorial wasn't all that impressive in week three either. They won 21 to nothing, but the game that got them on track and started to feel better about the team was week four. They defeated Modern Day on the road 22-6. to That was a part of a four-game winning streak. Lost here against Wrights week seven by nine points and won last week at Vincennes to get to five and three. Here is Road. Well, they were expecting run. That was the obvious, and he gets... Swarm for a loss of a couple, and Coach Hurt will take his final timeout. Let's step aside as well. Tigers in front by nine here late in the fourth quarter. They say nice guys don't finish first. So maybe it's time to reconsider what it means to be first. It's about being your best, but knowing you could be even better. 
It's being present, but respectful of history. You sure you want to make that move? It's donating something more valuable than money. It's believing in yourself. It's something bigger. It's coming from different families, but treating each other like brothers. It's not just being a man. It's being a mason. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. Once this game's over, we'll have a brief post-game show and name our Indiana SRN player of the game unless something wild happens this last two and a half minutes. I think we have our answer. Yeah, a rock bar player of the game. And again, uh, if you uh, want uh, lunch and dinner, open seven days a week. Go to uh, 1618 South Kentucky since 1943, the rock bar well, it's fourth and seven here. Tigers appear to be going for it again. They've been successful in fourth down plays tonight. Quarterback Fisher just throws it across the middle of the field, and it's incomplete. They were trying to throw to Leo Collins. It's broken up, so it's a turnover on downs. You know, I wonder if the thought of another block punt factored in the decision to go for it there. Of course, you're in a position at the 32-yard line where you can go for it, but rather than try to pin them even deeper, you worry about a block punt, so that's why the Tigers win for it. Well, Fisher put that up there, and uh, it almost happened. Mm -hmm. So Castle still with a slim chance. They're out of timeouts now. They need two scores in less than two and a half minutes. Bishop will be throwing quite a bit here down the stretch. Across the middle. Tight window. Deflected a couple of times. Incomplete. Trying to hook up with Jersey Wells. Well, as a sophomore, had a good catch their last drive. And an injured Castle player will halt play for just a moment. Uh, thanks to uh, Sam, Danbo uh, Sam uh, Mattingly as uh, he and the... Uh, Memorial Stat Crew gives us information. Porter Road, uh, 29 carries and even 200 yards and two touchdowns. He's going to be our Rockabar player of the game unless something incredibly different happens here this last 220. Good to see Jersey Wells get backed up to his feet for uh, Castle as he was the man slow to get up after the play. And Coach John Hurley, two minutes and 20 seconds away from getting bragging rights over Doug Hurt, uh, uh, getting his 125th victory where Hurt will still stay at 124. Yeah, Hurt was 124 and 68 coming into play tonight. Hurley 124 and 65. Of course, those two very good friends as well. On second and 10, the pass goes across the middle. It is caught for a short gain to the 36-yard line. Will Coleman, the sophomore, with a rare catch from him. Clock continues to move, and it's third down as we're coming up on two minutes. Of course, Tigers are thinking nothing deep, nothing behind them here with the nine-point lead. Screen pass near side deflected. They were trying to collaborate with Jersey Wells again. And right before the ball got to Wells, it was batted away. Now it's fourth down and final hope for Castle. And another injury. This time a Tiger. Joey Collins, he's up. Senior gets up to his feet quickly and starts to jog off the field. So the Knights have to convert on this fourth and five to maintain any hope. Well, the target has been is Wes Eigner, and he's going to be over on the, the top of the screen. Three receivers out to the right. Empty backfield for Bishop. 
to keep their hopes alive and too high for his target. Streaking across the middle, Antonio Harris. So the Tigers will take a couple of kneel downs and run out the clock and they'll finish the regular season at six and three. Castle will finish at five and four. It was certainly an entertaining second half though. Castle with a strong comeback a couple of times, but they are going to fall short. Again, our Indiana SRN player of the game, as we were talking about just moments ago, Porter Road, brought to you by Rockabar. They are located at 1618 South Kentucky Avenue in Evansville. Stop by after the game or for lunch or dinner at the Rockabar for your favorite pizza and other fine food. Fans start to head for the exits here on the near side. And they start to celebrate on the far side. Great way to go for, out for senior night. Again, the senior class now 38 and 11 in their four years. There's a, maybe three kneels downs for Fisher. And this game will be over. As Mike mentioned, Castle will be off next week before they start sectional play, a part of that 14 sectional. Tigers right back here. It is considered a road game as they will play bossy. If the Tigers win next Friday, they'll be back at home again for round two and taking on Jasper. Jasper earned the bye in that sectional, and Jasper thumped Vincennes today. Now 5A and 6A, they all get byes next week. So Jasper, North, and Castle will not play. And again, a big thank you to uh, everybody. Uh, ben Wood, our producer, uh, Eric Eaton, our camera shooter and Drew Weinzapple, number 52. If we can get a shot of him, he gets on for the last play, injured in uh, the second quarter of the initial game. The senior, whose uh, grandfather is uh, Ralph Weinzapple, legendary coach here at Memorial, and dad coached here at. Uh, Memorial as well as uh, at uh, Bossy, and that's going to be it. So the final kneel down will run out the clock. Final score, Memorial defeats Castle in week nine of the regular season, 28 to 19. Tigers finish six and three. The Knights finish five and four. Two teams will exchange handshakes and which, uh, wish each other good luck come postseason play. I uh, do want to give you a few scores that have been passed along. Two finals from the SIAC. Jasper beats Vincennes, 43-13. North over Central, 48 to nothing. They're in the fourth quarter. Harrison leading Bossy, 21 to 12. And they are late in the fourth quarter. One minute left at the Wrights Bowl. Model Day has the ball on the Wrights 20-yard line, and it's 14 to 7 right. So Model Day a chance to tie, or if they score, maybe go for the win. So we'll see how that one plays out. But here tonight, Mike Scavar, the Tigers win it, and Memorial feeling pretty good heading into postseason play at 6-3. and three. Well, they get the running game going, and Porter Road uh, showed uh, uh, his uh, potential that uh, he had coming in this year. 29 carries, uh, 200 yards unofficially uh, for a couple of touchdowns, but uh, no quit uh, in uh, the uh, uh, Castle Knights as uh, they get uh, uh, touchdown uh, catches uh, from um, uh, Wes Eigner. Also, um, Braden Bishop, a one-yard run, and uh, also uh, John Purdy, an eight-yard run, as uh, Fisher also throws uh, two touchdown passes, one to Lewis Seward, and the other one to Carrick Johnson. As Pete uh, Barrett goes uh, four for four in extra points, uh, block kicks play key. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Castle Knights blocked a memorial punt and set up a, a touchdown drive. Or the Tigers uh, didn't get a chance to give credit to them. Maybe we'll figure it out and give them credit uh, in the next week or two during the tournament uh, as uh, they get a couple of extra point, uh, points blocked. And uh, that plays a big key in the difference here because uh, Castle uh, ha had to uh, kind of play from behind Ladies and being down two scores. All right. We'll have the broadcast here on Indiana SRN next Friday, round one of the postseason. Memorial against Bossy. Kickoff at 7 o'clock, the pregame show at 6.50. For Mike Scavara, I'm Jevin Revin. One final time from Enlow Field. The Tigers defeat Castle 
28 to 19, and Memorial finishes six and three in the regular season. Good night from Enlow Field.